As naka-open yung YouTube ni Sir Robert. Naka-open yung YouTube ni Sir Robert. So, yes, that's very good. Na nag research ka. That's important. Let's welcome uh, a new person with us, Mr. Ilyser Hernandez. Kumusta po kayo, sir? Mr. Hernandez, uh, welcome. And could you say something to us? Here we are, the 1899 Congress. We are resuscitating the spirit of the 1899 Constitution and also the proceedings of the 1898-1999 Congress. We are trying to inform the Filipinos about them. Kasi parang wala talaga na. Parang nabura na lang sila sa isipan ng mga tao. Parang wala silang mga sacrifice yung nagawa. That's why we are here. We are reminding the people of what the past heroes has done. And they're reminding also the Filipino people that they have a living constitution which we can, uh, which we can follow. And uh, maybe... Uh, I will now, we are now 10 minutes or five minutes into the socialization process. But formally, mamaya, uh, I will now give the floor here while I prepare to 
make my presentation. At 8.30, we have the, somebody who will come in as a guest, as a resource speaker for us. I invited him, uh, Adol Paglinawan. I don't know if he will uh, make, the, make the time. He promised me he will be logging on at 8.30. And he will uh, give us his point of view about Rizal and the 1899 Constitution. So uh, that is why uh, we would expect him later on sa 8.30. Uh, ngayon, uh, I'm welcoming everybody, including uh, Mr. Enrique Hernandez. That's the first time that uh, we see him here with us. And you're welcome. And uh, to share with us what you think. I'm very glad that uh, among us, the youth here, Jarin Kedato, told me, just announced us that he's making this research. And I think uh, among the youth, he's convinced that the 1899 Constitution should really be become our reset point, a point for which we can renew the nation to a legal uh, and peaceful interregnum. Or somebody uh, went off. I don't know who was it. Or uh, there were more people kanina. Uh, she, she said Hernandez went off. I think maybe he didn't like uh, what we we're talking about. I don't know. This is the first time that he joined us and he has, run, he has gone out right now. But anyway, this is a very free effort that we're doing and we are convincing everybody to join us if they can. So uh, at the moment, uh, I will have to relinquish the chair now to uh, Dr. Robert Posadas. Dr. Robert Posadas, can you take the chair? Can I take the chair? Yes, you're the chairman of the meeting. You're the speaker now, acting speaker. I'll be <laughs> presenting. I'll be presenting later on. Well, isn't uh, Bienvenido is the speaker now? No, it's your turn because you've already recovered your um, uh, health condition. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> okay, anyway, okay. So in about, uh, what, uh, five minutes, uh, we'll start and open yes, the we, Congress? We, at, uh, we have invited a guest, Ado Paglinawan. Uh, he will be uh, with us at 8.30. So during this uh, period between now, you can preside over a briefing session, a point of information session, like a question hour for the parliament, like we are questioning everybody else about what we know about developments in the country and sharing that information with each one. Now you're presiding over like a question hour right now, Mr. Speaker, like the parliament. Okay. And then uh, Melo will be controlling the technical um, aspects. Yeah, yeah okay. Melo Gold is the one in charge of the okay. You don't have to worry about that. You just tell him, Melo, please mute somebody. He will do it for you. Okay. On this day of um, July uh, 2nd, uh, in the United States, in California specifically, in the West Coast and in Florida and uh, and in the Philippines at uh, what, like uh, almost nine o'clock in the morning on July 2nd, 2021, I declared this uh, 2021 uh, 1899 Shadow Congress uh, Constitution uh, officially open. So I recognize first uh, Mr. Bienvenido Lorque for a um, um, announcement of uh, what's happening there on the ground as of this moment or up-to-date up uh, events. Mr. Lorque. Uh, <clears throat> good morning, uh, everyone. And as of now, uh, the Filipino people are talking about anti-vaccination and some people are also talking uh, about pro-vaccination so well uh, uh, that is up to them we are not uh, encouraging them to be vaccinated and we are not also uh, acknowledging uh, encouraging them to fight for the vaccination but uh, as uh, we are telling them, that is up to them because they are already old enough to decide as to whether or not they have to accept it or leave it. 
So, uh, for the time being, uh, uh, talking about uh, the Constitution, there are some uh, rumors that uh, only the, 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 the only Constitution which is effective is 1935, 1963, and 1987. But I don't believe it is really uh, efficient because uh, as I post in Facebook, if you are a child, because they said that uh, 1889 construction is already dead. So I, 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 in my mind, I made it as uh, an example that if you are the child of your father and mother, and your father day is dead, then your mother married again. Will you consider the second husband of your mother as your real parent? or your real, real father? I don't think so. That is why what I am uh, what I am pushing is, we have to respect our parental constitution, which is 1899, because that is the original constitution and the first ever constitution in the Asian region. So that is what I observed, that the people did not uh, understand really what the historical uh, point of view of the Philippines, but uh, lumalabas ay eh, parang uh, naging sunod-sunuran lang. Pag ano narinig nila, okay, tama na yan. Wala na sila pakialam. But as far as our group is concerned, we are pushing to uh, recognize the 1899 Constitution with due respect to uh, parental constitution wherein if we believe in God, then, uh, well, I live unto Almighty God to okay. decide something about it. So, okay, I'm sure. Uh, thank you, uh, Bienvenido. Uh, but uh, on the uh, uh, take, picking it up from your belief or our belief in God, okay, we base in we base it on the uh, principle of constitutionalism, which is uh, really forever. The principle of constitutionalism is forever. It doesn't. It doesn't end, and uh, it will take uh, another formation of a people's will to to abolish what they have created. In other words, the principle of constitutionalism, constitutionalism represents the popular will of the people, and whatever is the popular superior will of the people is the voice of God. So. Who, who is uh, who is uh, more superior than the creator of the constitution themselves meaning the premise is that the people's will is always the superior creator of the constitution itself to govern a, a people to be a nation now like any constitution it has its mechanism for abolishing itself and uh, some uh, escape valve or mechanism wherein it can change itself but nowhere in any of the other constitution that followed ever abolished or abrogated the 1899 constitution so in that sense it's still alive because it's never been abolished it's never been uh, uh, abrogated and it continues on except that it was interrupted it doesn't mean that it's already dead. A constitution doesn't die until it's abolished by the creators themselves. So nowhere in the popular will, even of the 1935 and the consequent uh, constitution, does it, uh, does it contain a provision as part of the people's will to abolish the preceding or the former or the first Mbalolas uh, Republic constitution? So that was the first republic of the Philippines and the first republic in Asia. So whichever any of the constitution that followed mentioned to abolish the constitution. If somebody can show that, then they, they're standing on their premise that the, uh, that the 1899 constitution, in the absence of that, what else can they say? You know, it's easy to say, to make a general statement, like in law or in any uh, uh, argument, you can always say in generality that so and so and so and so, 
And it's easy to make a statement of a general uh, statement that the 1899 Constitution. Now, why is it, why is it dead? <laughs> That's the hardest part. You have to follow it up with a reason why it is dead. See, it's easy to make a conclusion without any support. So tell them that if they are really convinced that the 1899 Constitution uh, is dead and that's the only reason why they cannot support it, you know, they better come up with uh, something uh, to back it up as a premise or as something logical that they can find in any of the subsequent constitutions to state or to make it definite that the 1899 Constitution is dead. Otherwise, they'll forever be lost. They will no, they will never be Filipinos again. If they can find, if they cannot find any statement or any mechanism or provision in the following constitutions that says, that states that the 1899 Constitution is dead. It's easy to say that. Yeah. Now tell me why. How do you say that the 1899 Constitution is dead? If I were to ask you, Mr. Lorke, assuming that you will take the position that the 1899 Constitution is dead, can you make a statement to support that? No, because uh, I read uh, the five constitution and I never find any provision that uh, oh, the 1899 Constitution was being repealed or abrogated. Yeah, meet, meet them uh, directly on point. Meet them directly on point. That's that's, that's why, why I that's why I told them that uh, the, the parental constitution, which is 1899, if their father is dead and their mother married again, will they consider the second marriage <laughs> of their mother as the real uh, father? So no one, no one answered it. <laughs> yeah, even even if uh, there was a divorce in the Philippines, doesn't mean that if you divorce a person. Is dead or she's dead. <laughs> Just like any of the uh, following constitution, it doesn't even mention of any divorce or separation, right? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's a nice point. Very good point, uh, Bienvenido. So invite people that uh, you know will open up, say everything that you can. About why uh, they quite a bit of information, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Speaker. Yes. Yeah, you so should I mean, also pay attention to the digital rating of the hand because we do that to cut your attention and you should uh, just say bid for somebody to be recognized. Okay. Uh, you talked about yung sinabi mong concepto ng constitutionalismo at constitution. Mahirap maintindihan ng tao yan. Iyan na nga. Ang hirap niyan kasi alam mo, kumbaga sa Holy Trinity, yun ang Holy Spirit, hindi mo nakita eh. Hindi mo nakikita. It is the natural rule of law. It's the natural rule of law which uh, recognizes that the supreme, the welfare of the people is the supreme law. And that the practice of constitutionalism invoking that rule which is also recognized in the aporism written in a decision of jurisprudence written by Jose P. Laurel in 1940 when he was uh, a judge under justice of the Supreme Court under the Philippine Commonwealth and he in that uh, ruling recognized the word constitutionalism although he did not use that word it was there the uh, um, Salus Populi Suprema Est Suprema Lex. Now, what do I mean why constitutionalism is superior to any particular constitution? The example here is the 1987 constitution. That is a constitution that is now a de facto constitution. It is a constitution that is not Superior to constitutionalism, constitutionalism trumps it. Why is constitutionalism superior to a constitution? Because a constitution is just a product of constitutionalism. People who believe in constitutionalism, meaning to uh, that they want to 
enhance their welfare by coming together to produce a constitution of their own making, is they, these people are practicing constitutionalism. And that's what happened to us in 1898-1899. Our um, forefather said, oh, hindi na pwede yan, Emilio, hindi ka na pwedeng diktador. Kailangan tayo maging uh, governed by a constitution. So these people, uh, Bini, all the people there, Antonio Luna, told the Ginaldo na mag-constitution na tayo. At the same time, itong Amerika, gusto tayong sakupin dahil daw, tayo daw ay mga gago, hindi tayo marunong mag-govern ng sarili natin. Pakita natin na kaya natin magkaroon ng constitution at kaya natin ipakita sa buong mundo na we can govern ourselves. And uh, yun ang isang rason kung bakit nagawa ang constitution. Kasi the people, our heroes of the past, practice constitutionalism. They want to be ruled by law, not by the whim of a dictator, which at that time was Dictator Aguinaldo. Because we were a dictatorship in 1898. When Aguinaldo proclaimed the constitution, the independence of the Philippines, he was acting in, in the, uh, by authority of a dictatorial government proclaimed by him. So, and then because of his past, you know, his past, wherein he was uh, involved in the killing of uh, Bonifacio, the other leaders of our nation at the time were suspicious of the way he would use power. So they came together and said, Gawa tayo ng constitution. So constitutionalism, the spirit of wanting to be ruled by law, comes before any constitution. The people came together and produced the 1898 constitution. We were the first in Asia to produce a constitution. Even Sun Yat-sen admired us. Sun Yat-sen, who also believed in the heroism of Rizal, was the one who said, oh, it's time for Asians to have constitutionalism. The, he admired the Philippine experience, and he talked about it a lot. And he inspired two people in China, Chiang Kai-shek and Mao Zedong, who became rivals for power in China, but they were beginning to introduce consti constitutionalism into the previous imperial system of China. So you see, I am trying to narrate this in this way so that we can distinguish constitutionalism from a particular constitution. So now, 1898 constitution, 1899 constitution promulgated in 1899 was a constitution produced out of constitutionalism. Now, why is that important? Why is this distinction? Bakit importante ang distinction na to? Importante ito kasi ang isang constitution ay gawa lamang ng mga tao na gustong maging... Uh, sumunod ng mga alitantunin para they will mutually benefit from it. The key word is they will mutually benefit from it for having social order and social and uh, the rule of law. Pag meron ganun, uh, di mapayapa, makakapagnegosyo, makakaroon ng mga progreso ang bansa in a system that is ruled by law. Ngayon, Bakit kailangan nating huwag kalimutan yon ng constitutionalism ay mas superior kesa isang particular na constitution? Dahil nga sa nangyari dito sa 1987 constitution natin. Itong 1987 constitution ay produkto daw ng isang revolutionary government ni Cory. Okay, andun na tayo. Ngayon, ang tawag na sa kanya ay it is an oligarchic constitution. Why? Because it is honored more in the breach than in the observance. Hindi sinusunod. Yung mga nakalagay sa Constitution na dapat gawin tulad ng paggawa ng nitong 1987 Constitution, tulad ng kanilang alituntunin na dapat ang Kongreso ay gumawa ng, uh, ng law and political dynasties para masawat ang political dynasties. Walang ginawa, walang, walang nangyari. Hindi ginawa ng ating mga political leaders. Ngayon, ano pang isang hindi nila ginagawa? Yung uh, mga Artikulo 12, na sabi ng Constitution, pag mayroong panahon ng kagipitan, oras de peligro, dapat ang, uh, ang uh, pangunahing leader ng Pilipinas, Ejecutivo, which is the President, should invoke this uh, Artikulo 12 and take over public utilities para masawata ang paghihirap ng taong bayan. Nakalagay sa Constitution yan, hindi ginagawa. Ano ang nakalagay sa Constitution, hindi ginagawa? Ang hindi nakalagay, ginagawa. Tulad nung pagtanggal kay ERAP, wala naman nakalagay sa Constitution na constructive resignation. Inimbento lamang ng uh, Supreme Court. 
inimbento lang nila na meron daw uh, mga phenomena in uh, social experience na pwede na nating masabi na si Erap daw ay constructively resigned. Pero yung dokumentong binotohan ng tao nung kanilang plebisito sa 1987, ni isang word na related sa construct constructive resignation wala doon. So hindi yun ratify ng mga tao. Ngayon, bakit itong Supreme Court na isa lang instrumento na ginawa din ng 1987 Constitution yan, bakit siya mas magaling pa sa Constitution at sasabihin niya na ang Constitution ay dagdagan nito ng, uh, ng constructive resignation? Kalukuhan yun. Sabi nga ni Dr. Posadas, the result could not rise above the source. Yung Supreme Court ay resulta lamang ng 1987 Constitution. Bakit ngayon ay binabago niya ang Constitution mismo? Ayan, yung mga si Hilario, Hilario Davide, ang tawag ko dyan, Hilario Davide, at saka si Anton Arturo Artur ba, panganiban yan, mapanganib sa bayan, panganiban. <laughs> yan ang mga gumawa ng ganyang klaseng mga doktrina na walang kwenta. Huwag tayong mahiya na tawagin silang mga gago kahit sila ay chief justice at mga justices kasi gago naman talaga sila. Ngunit ang totoo, ginago nila ang Constitution natin. Pag ang isang bagay na katulad ng isang sagradong dokumento ng Constitution ay gagaguhin mo, pag binago mo kahit na isang butas dyan o isang word dyan, yari na yan. Ang Constitution na lang ginagawa mo. O, yung mga yung mga dapat din uh, dating intindihin na ang isa pang wala sa Constitution na ginagawa nila ngayon. Ha? Ginagawa nila. Yung medical emergency, wala yan sa Constitution. Hindi ka pwede magsabi na, oy, magpabakuna ka sa pilitan. Hindi. Pwede mo lang sabihin, etong bakuna kung gusto mo, magpabakuna ka. Kung ayaw mo, okay lang. Hindi mo pwede sabihin, oy, kayo dan, ay magpabakuna ng sapilitan kasi sabi ng ating Republican tradition at saka yung constitutionalismo, hindi mo dapat uh, salingin yung dulo ng aking uh, 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 yung, yung pag-intindi uh, mo ng pangangasiwa ng bayan ay hindi dapat lumabag sa pagsaling sa aking pandak na ilong. Hanggang doon lamang. Lalam, pag lumapit ka dyan, eh, yari ka. Bubuksingin kita katulad ni Manny Pacquiao. Yairiin kita. Yung medical emergency yan, kalokohan yan. Wala naman tayong sinasabi na masama yung bakuna. Hindi naman tayo sumasali sa debating yan. Na masama o maigi ang bakuna. Sinasabi lang natin, huwag lang pilitin ng tao kung ayaw. Kasi kasama yan sa pinaglaban natin na konstitusyonalismo. Ang grupo natin is for constitutionalism. And the only valid constitution in the country right now is what was produced by our founding fathers because it was the only constitution that was created or that was done at that time na walang pakialam ang mga dayuhan. Independente tayo noon. Tayo ay uh, nag-eleksyon sa mga ibang lugar na hindi pwede mag-eleksyon kasi nagbabanata uh, ng mga sundalo. Eh, in a point ng ating kinaoko lang gobyerno noon na nasa pangangasiwa ni dictator Aguinaldo. Now, dictatorship might be a bad word to most of us, but at that point it was important because we were at in a revolutionary war and so we need somebody to run things and Emilio Aguinaldo was the survivor that uh, controlled the center of power and so he uh, took the vacuum and exercised power at the time. So no matter what the personal characteristics of Aguinaldo is we respect the position of leadership which he had and his authority to decide. And so these decisions were made and so we had a Congress which produced a constitution. Noong uh, natapos ang constitution ng ating 1898 constitution, natapos siyang ginawa yan mula September 1898, natapos siyan November 24, uh, 1898. Ang nangyari dyan is that uh, nagkaroon na tayo ng bagong constitution at yan ay pre-nobulgate ni Aguinaldo noong January 23, 1899. Kaya yan ang source ng ating constitution. I would like to welcome muna Mr. Chair, uh, Adok Paglinawan who is our uh, resource person right now. He just appeared and he's there right now. Uh, Mr. Chair, I give you the floor to welcome Mr. Adok Paglinawan.
Yes, we'd like to recognize and welcome uh, Mr. Ado Paglinawan. Please uh, come forward and be recognized as now a uh, participant in a, our con shadow congress of the 1899 Constitution. Point of information, welcome. Mr. Speaker. Uh, yes. Mr. Ado Paglinawan is representing the district of uh, Quezon uh, that include uh, Tiaong because he is a native of that place. He is uh, now officially joining us in this Congress as a member of that district representative. So I give you the floor back, uh, Mr. Speaker. Okay, excellent. So welcome, Mr. Ado Paglinawan. Please uh, step forward, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. Uh, magandang gabi, magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Depende kung nasaan kayo. <laughs> <coughs> Medyo akala ko madali itong assignment sa akin ni Gil Ramos pero kinailangan bigyan ng kaunting uh, seryosong pansin dahil uh, napipinto rito ang maraming uh, particular na sa hinaharap ng mga kabataan ngayon na tumitingin sa kanilang kinabukasan ay maaaring ito na ang pagkakataon ito na ang pagkakataon para magkaroon tayo ng pagbaklas sa limang daang taon na sumpa ng kolonyalismo sa ating bansa Nagsimula ito nung tayo pangalanan, hindi ko maintindihan kung base sa pangalan ng hari ng Espanyang si Felipe o di kaya ay sa kanyang sakit na si Pilis. So, <laughs> I would like to start with that uh, banner para maintindihan natin kung ano nangyari mula nung itanim ni Magallanes ang kurus ng sumpa sa ating lupa dito. Kuluan. Uh, Kuluan ng mga maharlika. Anyway, uh, uh, with due respect, uh, gusto kong simulan ang aking uh, uh, dissertation ngayong araw na ito. Uh, if the president would allow at uh, dito sa pagbubukas ay masasabi ko na sa dalawang nobela ni Rizal ginawa niyang purpose ay bigyan tayo ng dalawang advice that might serve as warnings not only to the Spaniards but also to the Filipinos of during that time doon sa una He served notice on the Spaniards that if the Spanish government, in order to please the friar, remain deaf to the demands of the Filipino people, the latter would have recourse in desperation to violent means and seek independence relief for its sorrows. By the way, itong aking sinasad ngayon ay base kay Apolinario Mabini sa kanyang Memorias de la Revolucion Filipina. At marami rito ay inedit ko lamang. Sa pangalawang warning ay para sa mga Pilipino na kung if they, will na, if they should take up their country's cause motivated by personal hatred and ambition. They would far from helping it, only make it suffer all the more. At ito nakikita natin, uh, dahil tayo galing sa 30 taon ng Aquino the Mother to Aquino the Son, 30 years of vindictiveness, revenge, and hatred. Ang gustong ibig, ang ibig sabihin dito ni, ni Rizal ay, Only those actions would benefit the Filipinos which were dictated by true patriotism which not only demands the sacrifice to the common good of personal revenge and ambition, 
but also requires the lack of self-interest, abnegation and gratitude of Elias, symbolizing the love and devotion of Jose Rizal. It is undeniable that in the Philippines, the desire for improvement was great and widespread. It is not possible to explain otherwise the mistrust and hatred that the Filipinos, from the most ignorant to the most cultured, were beginning to feel through the friars in the meantime that they realized that the latter tenaciously opposed all reform. Hindi talaga pagbibigyan ang mga Pilipino. Time was when the friars were wont to defend no? the natives against the rapacity of the encomenderos. For in those days, the friars, trapped in their own selfishness and the Catholic religion not deeply rooted, they had great need of confidence and love for their parishioners whose trust and candor once exploited, they then became rich and arrogant. Ito mga prayle na ito. How was it that they forgot those sweet and gentle accents that had worked such miracles from their faith? It was because whoever acts in bad faith corrupts himself and corrupt hearkens not to the voice of reason but to that of passion. The love and respect that everyone professed for Rizal, Marcelo del Pilar, and all other patriots who collaborated with them in the great work of the national regeneration manifested clearly and openly the political aspiration of the Filipinos. That La, Solera, La Solidaridad had faithfully interpreted those aspirations was likewise shown by the fact that its expenses were met by Filipinos residing in the islands who were thus risking their personal safety and interests. From the start of the periodicals, publication, a number of Manila residents calling themselves propagandists distributed the issues which were smuggled into the city and collected subscriptions and contributions given by patriots in Manila and neighboring provinces. Lately, ko lang nalaman that much of this pala was supported by the underground economy of Binondo. As such, they had occasion to visit the capital, well-to-do and educated persons from distant provinces were also one to give their help. If the rich men of Manila contributed very little, it was because they mistrusted the person in charge of the funds and feared for their own interests. When he realized that this disorderly and ill-coordinated effort yielded little, well, on sustainability and funding, Rizal thought of organizing a society called Liga Filipina, which was inaugurated a few days before his exile to the Pitan in Mindanao. The statute of this association was limited to the establishment by the very votes of its members of people's councils in the towns, a provincial council in every province, a supreme council for the whole archipelago, but did not define the objectives of the association. According to Mambini, he did not know if these objectives were defined in the inaugural meeting over which Rizal himself personally presided because he was not present, and because he never had close relations with the illustrious doctor. In the four close, si Mabini at Chirisal. All Mabini could say was that society was dissolved a few days, Yung La Liga Filipinos dissolved a few days after its inauguration because of the banishment of its founder. It was reorganized later on the initiative of Don Domingo Franco, Andres Bonifacio, and others, giving the post of Secretary of the Supreme Council to Mabini. They then fixed the objectives of the society 
have a short program couched in the following equivalent language. Number one, to contribute to the support of La Solidaridad and the reforms it has. Number two, to raise funds to meet the expenses not only of the periodical, but also of the public meetings organized to support such reforms and of the Spanish parliamentarians who would advocate them. And number three, to have recourse to all peaceful Два кусочек, and legal Thus transforming the society into a political party. I assume for possible representation in the Spanish context. So leading on. Thus transforming the society into a political party for purposes of representation in the Spanish context. The association, however, did not have better faith this time for it had to be dissolved after a few months of life. However, it had promising beginnings. The majority of the members of the Supreme Council were persons known for their learning, patriotism, and social status. Thanks to the effort of Andres Bonifacio and others, people's councils were soon organized in Tondo and Trozo, while others were being organized in Santa Cruz, Ermita, Malate, San Paulo, Pantacan, and more. This was our first established history of orderly community organizing. Subsequently, a small monthly contribution was required from every member, the proceeds of which were applied to the expenses of La Solidaridad, which were mostly urgent to be met. The members paid their dues at first, but later stopping on the pretext that they did not agree with the society's objectives because the Spanish government paid no attention, independence came. Your periodical, nor in fact would do so to any lawful activity. Dead ma, the dead ma, the mga Espanyol. Upon investigation, it then transpired that those who commissioned to organize the People's Councils had not required previous affirmation to the society's program as a condition for membership in the society. Medyo nag ministerial sign up strong like what most organizations and NGOs do right now in the Philippines. They just pass on a piece of paper uh, with people signing, without people understanding what they were signing for. The Supreme Council, which was more of organizing committee because its members had not been elected by a vote, saw clearly that as soon as the rank and file elected their members according to the bylaws, the program would be changed. The council understood for the first time that the masses, whom the Spaniards believed to be brutish or at best indifferent, well, in the vanguard were political aspirations. <laughs> Realizing that the work of conciliation and compromise was beginning, was bringing no results, the council declared the dissolution of the society so that disagreements among its members should not lead to its discovery by the authorities. Those who were in favor of keeping up with the fortnightly publication formed one group called Compromisarios, because each one engaged to pay a monthly contribution of five pesos to meet its expenses. Andres Bonifacio, for his part, reorganized the society under the name of Katipuna ng mga anak ng bayan, Association of the Sons of the People, already with independence as its objective. And we already know the Katipuna grew very rapidly because the insolent and provocative way in which the priors carried out their campaigns had exasperated the masses. But if the organization, political organizations, had been permitted in the archipelago, and if the middle class, which was the most educated and influential, had been able to move freely, it could have undoubtedly calmed the people's anger down and obstructed the growth of the Katipunan, since that path was resolutely in favor of La Liga's program 
even after having endured most cruel sufferings, even more after the fact of the Akna battle. So this is the first part. Fast forward tayo to the American time. Dito nagsimula saan nagtapos. As Mabini had foreseen, our improvised militia could not withstand the first blow struck by the disciplined American troops. Fast forward tayo sa Americano. Moreover, it must be admitted that the Filipino forces stationed around Manila were not prepared for the attack that night. General Ricarte, in command of the detachments in the south, and General San Miguel, commander of the eastern zone where the attack began, were then in Manolos. Little accustomed to the war, Filipino commanders and officers hardly appreciated the value of military instruction and discipline so that the placements were not served with anything approaching order and precision. The Filipino general staff had not studied or laid down any plans for offensive or withdrawal movements in case of an outbreak of hostility. Emilio Aguinaldo, who had scant appreciation of the advantages of a unified command and coordinated tactics, had made no provision for the prompt restoration of communications among the various units should sudden retreat interrupt the telegraphic system. He wanted to keep his forces around Manila Hmm. Under his direct orders, commanding them from his residence in Malolos, although he could not devote himself completely to the proper discharge of duties of this command because of his preoccupations as head of government and the conceit of personally deciding many matters which should have been channeled through the departments or cabinet of the central administration. Micromanager Paul C. Emilio Aguinaldo. Only after the outbreak of hostilities, when the telegraph lines had already been cut, did he name Antonio Luna, General Antonio Luna, commander of the forces operating around Manila. But by that time, the various army units had already evacuated their own emplacements their old emplacements and communications among them had become slow and hazardous. Furthermore, Luna resigned his command shortly afterwards because the war minister had disapproved one of his dispositions. He, however, resumed command of the defense operations north of Manila when the provincial government was compelled to leave Malolos for Isidro in the province of Nueva Isidro. Luna was able to raise fresh forces in Calumpi, forming a number of companies composed of veteran soldiers from the former native army organized by the Spanish government. And with these troops as a core, he imposed a stern disciplinary system to stop the mobilization of the troops. But many commanders, jealous of their authority, withheld from him the effective cooperation that was necessary. This led to the cashiering by brute force of commanders who did not recognize his authority or the court, marshalling of those who abandoned their posts in the face of the enemy or the disarming of troops that disobeyed his orders. In spite of all this, in spite of all this obstacle, Luna would have succeeded in imposing and maintaining discipline if Aguinaldo had supported him with all the power of his prestige and authority. But the latter was also beginning to grow jealous, seeing Luna slowly gaining ascendancy by his bravery, audacity, and military skill. All those affronted by his actuation were inducing Aguinaldo to believe that Luna was plotting to wrest from him the supreme authority and power. So after the Calumpit Bridge had fallen to the American forces, due mainly to the scarcity of ammunition, Luna rushed to see Mabini in San Isidro and entreated him to convince Aguinaldo at that time had come 
to adapt guerrilla warfare. Yeah. But I mean, they promised to do so, but while yeah. making it clear to him that he may not yeah. get anywhere because his advice was hardly heeded in military yeah. matters in as much as him not being a military man, but among the letters. But Bini could not keep his promise because he did not see Aguinaldo until some after some time. Besides having relinquished office to his successor, Don Pedro Paterno, in the first days of May 1899, Mabini left for the town of Rosales near Bayambang. That date is important because May 1899, Nanjana and Balolo's constitution. A few weeks later, Aguinaldo sent a telegram asking Luna to see him in Kamanatuan for an exchange of views. But when Luna arrived in Kamanatuan, he did not, he did not find Aguinaldo at home, but he found his death by treachery plotted by the very same soldier whom he had disarmed and court martialed for abandonment of their post of disobedience to his orders. Colonel Francisco Roman, who accompanied Luna, died with him. Before his death, Luna had his headquarters in Bayambang and had reconnoitered Banged to determine if it met the conditions for an efficacious defense in case of a retreat. Because Luna was trying to draw the American forces farther to the north. What is more, he was already beginning to transport there the heavier pieces of ordnance. While Luna was being murdered, Aquinaldo was in Tarlac, taking command of the forces which the deceased had organized, establishing his government in Tarlac, wasting his time on political and literary activity. So much that this negligence General Otis exploited by landing his infantry in San Fabian mm -hmm. while his cavalry wheeled through San Jose and Omingan Pangasinan, taking San Quintin and Tayog, thus cutting all Aguinaldo's lines of retreat and giving the death blow to the revolution, to the armed revolution. Mabini found it hard to believe that Luna was planning to rest from the presidency from Aguinaldo because Luna seriously aspired to be prime minister to replace Paterno, who was advocating an autonomy program that he thought was a violation of the fundamental law of the state and a punishable crime. Note that Luna was already functioning here under a constitutional democracy as the Malolos constitution went into effect January 21, 1899. The general was assassinated less than five months after it in June 5, 1899. Mabini records the true ambitions of Luna to support Aguinaldo by being the prime minister. Anyway, this is shown by the report in the Independencia inspired by Luna and published a few days before his death which stated that the Paterno Buen Camino, remember those things, cabinet would be replaced by another in which Luna would be prime minister as well as war minister. Within a few days, Luna received Aguinaldo's telegram calling him to come and to an, and you already know what happened. Luna had certainly allowed himself to stay on occasion that Aguinaldo had a weak character and was unfit to be a leader. But such language was only an explosive outlet for a fiery and ebullient temperament which saw its plans frustrated by lack of necessary support. High blood si Luna. All of Luna's activities revealed integrity and patriotism combined with a zealous activity that measured up to the situation Ito po ang account ni Mabini na inuulit ko sa inyo. If Luna was sometimes hasty and even cruel in his decision, it was because the army was in a desperate position due to the demoralization of the troops and the lack of munitions 
only acts of daring and extraordinary energy could prevent its disintegration. The death of Aguinaldo had plainly shown that, sorry, the death of Andres Bonifacio later had plainly shown in, in the, uh, Emilio Aguinaldo a boundless appetite for power and Antonio Luna's personal enemies exploited his weakness of Aguinaldo with skillful intrigues in order to deliver Luna's ruin. Can we say, therefore, that if Aguinaldo, instead of having Luna killed, had supported him with all his power, the revolution would have triumphed? Well, we could do a presumption. Mamili least doubts, however, that the Americans would have a higher regard for the courage and military activities of the Filipinos. But had Luna been alive, Mabini was sure that Otis moral mortal blow would have been parried or at least timely prevented, and if Aguinaldo's unfitness for military command would not have been exposed so clearly. Furthermore, to read of Luna, Aguinaldo had recourse to the very soldiers whom Luna had punished for breaches of discipline. By doing so, Aguinaldo destroyed that leadership destroy that leadership within his own army. With Luna, its most firm support fell the revolution and the ignominy of the fall bearing wholly on Aguinaldo brought about by his, about in turn his own moral death, a thousand times more bitter than physical. Aguinaldo therefore ruined himself down by his own deeds in what were great crimes punished by the divine God. Today, as we speak, my mind took to the shores of the past because two days ago, July 1, the People's Republic of China celebrated its 100 years anniversary. Prior to this was the G7 in the United Kingdom where the United States was playing a catch-up with its European allies to recover waning space that had been attracted to China. But if the West were to catch up, former Lib Liberian Public Works Minister Gude Moore implies that it may have to change its model. He said in renegotiating our compact with the U.S., a constraint analysis has to be done first. A growth diagnostics that tends to answer the question, what is the binding constraint to economic growth within a country? He was speaking, of course, in behalf of Liberia and the African states. But this might as well be true to us. Because we are about in a stage where President Duterte has declared that independence foreign policy putting us slightly on the side of China, but in the middle with the U.S. on the other side. The U.S., however, has been busy with wars all over the world hastened since September 11, 2001. Ito po yung um, Twin Towers where the war against uh, Al-Qaeda was declared. That in so short a time, the U.S. has been overtaken by China in so many respects. 2001 was 20 years ago. China was at the center of its 100 years of humiliation in the 1930s. 30 years after, in 1960, it was coming out of its revolutionary shell. By 1990s, it was tinkering on democratic socialism, rising out of the, of the uh, cultural revolution. Today, and after another 30 years, it is already exporting communitarian democracy using the revival of the old Silk Road onto the Belt and Road Initiative as its economic thrust into a shared future with humanity.
a Swiss pay a Swiss interest 10 years ago in 2010. Dr. Bao Gan Go asked, to what extent will democracy expand in Chinese society in the next few decades under the auspices of one party rule and under the system of a corporatist state? She, Dr. Guopo got his PhD in political science from the Brandeis University in Massachusetts, USA, although he got his Bachelor of Arts and Master of Arts from Shenzhou University in China. And he is a professor of political science at the Dalton State College and a research associate at the China Research Center in Atlanta, Georgia, USA. The question was triggered by the seeming dichotomy between authoritarianism and democracy, and how China was challenging itself to melt into an impasse into a paradigm that would best suit its 1.5 billion people population. Definitely. If taken too lightly, it will implode. If taken loosely, it will explode. This means that in Confucian terms, that is, in terms of uh, Confucius, China needs to develop a Xiongyong style of governance model that combines a strong state with decentralized democratic politics. It may resist the idea of liberalism, as it will remain a communist state in the predictable future. But it does not and cannot resist the idea of democracy. Kang Xiaoguang, a well-known scholar in China, says Confucianism disagrees with liberalism in that it does not recognize the notion that all men are equal instead. Confucianism says that it is inequality that leads to meritocracy that have persisted in Chinese history. And the legitimacy of meritocracy is the rule of benevolence. How do we reconcile this? and later on with the Filipino history. Unlike liberalism, which considers the state to be a necessary evil, di ba, laging magkabanggaan <laughs> ang liberalism at saka ang Estado, ang gobyerno. Confucianism believes that it is the state that is always needed for public welfare. It may attempt developing its model of democracy that will best suit its own needs for efficiency and equity, a model that will also unite its past with the present, a model that will accompany the needs of the strong state and the needs for a larger yet vibrant civil society. And this is what is called as vertical democracy. John Nisbet claims that a new vertical democracy which combines the bottom-up democracy with the top-down central command is emerging in China and is an insightful analysis. Vertical democracy and as alternative to the horizontal democracy of the West may also be called by some as collective democracy in which traditional collectivism will be combined with individual rights. The notion of vertical democracy is not new. Aristotle's idea of government is a polity a state in which rich and poor respect its other's rights and best qualified citizens rule with the consent of all and a form of government that infuses oligarchy with democracy. Oligarchy here is not to be meant originally, but the rule of the rich and powerful, the ruling elite. Mendem idea 
is an essential value of the paternalistic state. The Communist Party of China has endorsed the Leninist democratic centralism for many years that calls for freedom of discussion, unity in action. The key to developing the democratic component of this doctrine is enabling the ruling party serving as the core of a new democracy to balance exercising veto power while practicing governance over popular wishes, tempering cultural influence, on a new Chinese polity. Having taken a slice of Philippine history and the dissonance in it, and having taken a sample of what is happened, of what has happened and happening in China, let us look to the future of Philippine politics. Ito pong kumul na ito. This nipahat of ours has taken fancy. Itong usakin natin dito, itong grupo natin with the Malolos Constitution of 1899. Against all forms of basic laws, this constitution stands out as the only truly basic law that has been developed genuinely by Filipinos. It's special Specificity is definitely a reaction to the denial of civil and human rights by the Spanish rule. It marks champion basic freedoms as an expression of our forebears preferring a democratic way of life. But read through it, the traces of authoritarianism is also evident. A powerful president who is the commander in chief of the military. There are checks and balances, and most may be imputed afterwards, as Gil Ramos and I agree through constitutional amendments as we go. But this positions us to be ready for the ghosts of Rizal, Bonifacio, and Luna. <clears throat> who now haunts us from the accounts of Mabibi. So this leads me back to where I started, to the La Liga Filipina, <clears throat> which I hope ushers in a single party system. But even before that, I wish to say that our tendency to legalism must be tempered by a cultural reorientation of our people back to the Bathalas, where we came from, as we were mga tagapulo, people of the islands, and this Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. <coughs> Luz, Luz, Mininda. Has become a melting pot of migration from all around us, including the Chinese and the Arab traders. If China eventually succeeded defining itself to the modern man, it was the paradigm shift that Hu Jintao reintroduced from its long history to define the characteristics of China's communism. It had to be done because with the economic power blending with the political power wielded by the Communist Party of China, the temptation to transforming into a second hegemon, given the U.S. activities around the world was becoming very strong within China and its leadership. Left alone, that would spell a third world war or a more bitter cold war at the very least. It was the effort of Hu Jintao reviving the preeminence of the Mandarin term Hoswe onto the centrality of the Chinese consciousness. Translated, this meant promotion of the harmonious society, reconciling a strong central power in coexistence with democratized population base. 
in internationalizing this principle, Xi Jinping now successfully extends it to promote a harmonious world of a community of shared future for humanity. China's use of its economy as soft power is a deliberate move to stray away from US economy hegemony to avoid a confrontation where all sides lose. If China can modernize Confucian and arrive at a win-win solution, we can revive our humble beginnings nurtured with the ideals of Jose Rizal, the courage of Bonifacio, and the tenacity of Luna with Mabini as our recording secretary. Together with the political infrastructure of the Malolos Constitution to arrive at our own version of a vertical democracy. This will give direction to Kami Lutayan's trinity of political liberation, economic emancipation, and social concord. And those who wish to truncate our present governance madness with a revolutionary government, but with little or no bloodshed. Praming salamat po. Thank you and good day. I now open myself to questions. Thank you, Mr. Ado Paglanawan. And now um, the uh, session is open to interpolation on uh, the point of information of uh, Mr. Ado Paglanawan. Bienvenido. Any uh, question or comment? Say what? Okay, I'll, I'd like to start it off. It's a very uh, excellent uh, point of information privilege speech by Mr. Ado Paglinawan. Yeah, in that uh, it brings up to uh, currency the idea of why it's a win-win uh, adoption of the Malolos Constitution. Because as uh, Bienvenido Lorque recently said, that uh, some of these uh, young people are not supporting the 1899 constitution because it's dead and i pointed out there's no such thing as a dead constitution until or unless it's uh, abolished or abrogated by a succeeding constitution and nowhere in the provisions of the uh, consequent constitutions or the following constitutions in 1935 and so on uh, does it mention of any abolition or abolishment or abrogation of the 1899 Constitution? And by, uh, by virtue of the principle of constitutionalism, a constitution is never dies unless it's abolished or abrogated by a succeeding constitution, because it represents the uh, people's uh, will, which is the supreme creator of the constitution themselves to form a government uh, uh, among themselves for orderly uh, administration and so forth and so on under the rule of law or under the uh, highest law of the land. So nothing has replaced the, uh, the pure people's will uh, constitution of 1899. In that, uh, I, I say it's pure people's will because uh, it was the first uh, constitution to create the first republic in Asia. Uh, and, and therefore, the, uh, the, uh, the constitution lives on because there was, any, there was never any other succeeding abolition or abrogation. And so, in relation to what Mr. Paglilaman has uh, informed us, and also connecting it with uh, Mr. Lorca's uh, uh, statements that the uh, young people now do not support the 1889 Constitution just for the pure reason or for just the uh, reason that it's dead. You know, it, it's never dead unless it's abolished. So it's very easy to make a statement for somebody to say that a constitution is dead. And for that matter, in relation 
when there is the concept of divorce or separation, mm -hmm. when somebody separates or divorces a person, it doesn't mean that the person is dead. Mm -hmm. So much more that has never been mentioned by the succeeding constitution that it divorced or disconnected the Malolas constitution. Well, that, no. So therefore, what I'd like to point out, this is very, uh, very relevant and an excellent uh, reminder to our young people that in order for them to give meaning, meaning to their current lives, you know, as, as Filipinos, they better think uh, twice uh, before making any decision or a definite decision that they will not support the 1899 constitution if they're not going to relate their 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 present lives uh, with the uh, with the uh, living past. I say living past because the constitution lives on. And it represents the blood, sweat, and tears of our forefathers, just like they pay respect to their forefathers. So in order for them to have at least a meaning in their lives, they should recognize the past. And in so doing, at least study and make reasons why they cannot or they can support the Malolas Constitution because it's part of their living past. So, Mr. Uh, Paglinawan... You know, I uh, I admire your uh, your point of uh, reference to the Malolos Constitution, and as I've said, the uh, session is open to interpolation. I recognize you, Mr. Lorcan. Well, uh, as uh, uh, the millennial said that the uh, 1899 Constitution is dead, I doubt that they have committed a big mistake because. The, 18, the 1987 Constitution, considering that they made it legally recognized, however, they also failed to follow the mandate of the provision in Article 14, Section 3, Paragraph 1, which states, All educational institutions shall include the study of the constitution as part as part of the curricula. Now the question is, if these people questioning our intent and purpose to adopt the 1899 constitution, which says that the, it is already dead, why they are not following the provision of the present constitution, which is mandated that it is mandatory? to be a um, curricula in college. So these people who are questioning us to adopt the 1899 Constitution, do they really recognize their own Constitution at present? Because uh, 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 as far as the, 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 the present Constitution is concerned, uh, in colleges they are not teaching this in college. The Constitution, I mean, is not taught in college. Why? So, meaning to say that they themselves is uh, abusing or violating the provision of the 18, uh, 1987 Constitution for this purpose. Therefore, my very intent and purpose is to adopt the 1899 Constitution because this is our parental constitution which Kaado had mentioned that our uh, heroes died for this. Thank you. Prof. Rebalsa wants to speak, I think, Mr. Speaker. Yes. You are not recognizing the joke about you should look at gallery view and look at the raised hand of people. Prof. Rebalsa has been raising his hand. Thank you see. very much. Okay, anyway, I don't see it, but Mr. Balsa, okay, go ahead. I recognize Mr. Balsa, please. Thank you, Dr. Posadas, uh, Mr. Speaker, and uh, and I also wish to commend uh, the brilliant uh, presentation of uh, Mr. Paglinawan. I am truly honored to be in the company, even if it's in cyberspace, of distinguished and scholarly gentlemen. Um, it's a very sad but challenging uh, situation where the current generation of millennials is challenging our, is confronting our 
drive to return to the Malolos Constitution of 1899. And I think we have to explain it in a language that they will understand. Right now, our generation of millennials, of millennial Filipinos, pale in comparison to their counterparts around Southeast Asia. And it's quite embarrassing that countries like Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos are willing to pay higher salaries for our teachers in order to teach English in their schools. And I have encountered so many of them during my travels you know, in Southeast Asia. Quite heartbreaking. And we can look back in 1986, 1987, at that crucial moment of history, that if he, we had not, if we had only crafted a proper constitution, we could have been at least at the same level of Thailand. And we would not be exposed to such an embarrassing situation where we export our people and not our products. We can even look further back in 1972. Had Marcos crafted a proper constitution, we would have been at least as prosperous as Malaysia that is now an IT hub enviable around the world. But we lost that opportunity. We can go even further back to 1965 under Marcos. Had he, had he taken the initiative, we could have been at least like Singapore at, at best. And let's go further back. Under the presidency of Ramon Magsaysay, had he pursued a constitutional reform that would have adopted a land reform with co cooperative development, the same way Taiwan had done, which is what he wanted to do, then the Philippines could have been another Taiwan. You can just imagine. And if we go further back, let's go back to where it all started. Had we, in 19, in, in, at the birth of our nation, the first republic, had we adopted our own constitution and asserted our sovereignty back then, like Japan, remember that the Philippines was second only to the Japan in Asia at that time. Then the Philippines, the Filipinos would have been on the same level as the Japanese. And we lost that opportunity. So it is a time, this time we question the millennial. Are you pleased? Are you satisfied with this slow tendency, this trend towards mediocrity? Or would you like to wake up and correct, correct the errors of our forebears and return to the very constitution that would have given us a chance to have joined the League of Nations, the family of nations? as an equal. That's what I'd like to contribute. And I thank you very much for this opportunity for having listened. And I wish I had listened to the whole talk. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Geoffrey Balsay. Anybody else on point of interpolation for Ms. Uh, Ado Paglinawan, please? Really, Villarama, Villarama? Can I recognize you for an interpolation on Mr. Paglinawan's point of information, privileged speech? Uh, well, uh, I just want to greet uh, Ado, who has been my uh, idol for quite a time. Magandang uh, umaga po, Ado. Uh, uh, maganda po ang inyong mga nasabit uh, for, for this hour. Gusto ko unang makinig sa mga pinag-uusapan. At uh, alam niyo naman na lahat ng inyong mga post ng mga nakaraang mga taon eh, nababasa ko. Nalulukot lamang ako at hindi uh, ko kayo nasasamahan sa mga mga pinaglalaban nyo, lalong-lalo na sa mga 
halimbawa dun sa airport sa Bulacan for uh, certain reasons <laughs> na medyo <laughs> naiintindihan niyo naman siguro ka tayo ako uh, I, I, I belong to a, a group na medyo conservative at uh, bibigay galang lamang ako dun sa sa happy namin para huwag naman na lumabas ang uh, parang masyado akong uh, lumalaban sa mga investors. Pero nagkakaintindihan po naman tayo. And welcome to to our Congress. Ayun lang po. Salamat po. Salamat po. Okay. In the meantime, I have a question uh, for Mr. Paglanawan, please. Uh, Mr. Paglanawan, uh, you were mentioning that uh, General Luna was already uh, beginning to enforce the uh, 1899 promulgated, promulgated Constitution. And can you further explain uh, and uh, clarify or confirm that uh, General Luna was already beginning to enforce the 1899 Constitution under the uh, presidency of uh, General of uh, President uh, Emilio Aguinaldo? Mr. Paglinawan. Okay. Uh, ito pong uh, sinamarize ko actually is a uh, the memoirs of Mabidi. Recording in yeah. progress. Ito pong ito pong aking ano actually is uh, memoirs of Mabidi. And uh, it's a it's a first person account na uh, actually ang problema kasi po nila noon talaga eh, hindi naman katulad ngayon na talaga nakapag-uusap tayo we, we are able to talk to each other in the modernity of uh, technology but communications then was very bad among them especially because the telegraph system was no longer functioning mm -hmm. and um, I don't think the Katipuneros developed a messenger system just like the uh, the uh, yung mga tao ni Ertugrul doon sa Ottoman Empire o di ka yung mga, mga dynasties. They had a very efficient way of uh, exchanging messages even by horseback or by foot. Definitely, communications was one of the major problems of our uh, independence movement. So much that uh, what uh, Luna was sharing with uh, Mabini, and in fact, even publishing those newspaper po na in inspire ni Luna yung la independencia ay hindi naman ho nababasa lahat ito noon. Uh, media was not as extensive. Now, added to the fact na maraming mga intrigero na nasa gitna. Uh, this were people who were basically illustrados who didn't want to lose their position even as early as the Spanish uh, time to the American time. Uh, these were people, Sina Bergamino, Paterno, who were advocating that in fact uh, we should be uh, just a part of the Spanish Cortes during the Spaniards or working towards uh, the pacification movement and making it easy for the Americans to normalize the situation in the country. There are those who would want to fight, which were part remnants of the Katipunan, but there were those who were also pacifists. So, Society then, unlike our politics now, was not polarized. Maraming, and uh, it, mahirap mag-polarize, 
mahirap mag-crystallize ng public opinion precisely because there was no efficiency of communication. And so this was, uh, I would even assume in good faith, was not properly communicated to Aguinaldo. In fact, the reverse. Yung mga nakakaalam po nito, those who knew about this, were even using it to their advantage to sow intrigue between Aguinaldo and Luna. Without necessarily saying that they want to sabotage the Katipunan. But that would be the necessary effect. So the ambition of Luna was not really to dislodge Aguinaldo the way Aguinaldo dislodged Bonifacio, but to, with Aguinaldo as president, he would want to be the head of the parliamentary form of government kasi po ang, ang Malolos Constitution virtually constructed a parliamentary form of government. The people elect the members of the assembly. The members of the assembly elect the president. And also, yung pinaka-speaker nila, which would be the uh, prime minister. So Aguinaldo would be the head of state. And maybe Luna would be head of government, or if not, head of the legislature, while at the same time, the war minister. Yun, yun ang kanyang posisyon doon sa parliamentary. Siya yung magiging war minister, and at the same time, the convening chairman or the prime minister of the assembly. Uh, this is not, and this was not communicated properly. And during that time, alam nyo naman, uh, marami kasi hindi nakakala, many, many people don't know that the formation of the army during that time was really based on people who had money, who had people, who can organize. That is why Marami tayo mag, we had so many generals who became, uh, we, we had so many people who became generals because they could form their own, uh, their own armies. And when people of varied <coughs> interest mix, alam nyo na, and perhaps ito yung kultura na unfortunately Unfortunately, dala natin hanggang ngayon. No? So, a frame of mind, uh, just to answer the question, finally, the Luna was already within the mold of the Malolos Constitution to work with Aguinaldo. Yung po ang on record with Mabini, yung po ang on record with the La Independencia. Now, if I may comment on the earlier question about the millennials, uh, not knowing about the Malolos Constitution, this is understandable kasi karamihan po na millennials natin ngayon, maniniwala ba ngayon? Would you like to believe? They don't even know Jose Rizal. They think Jose Rizal is just a, a, a statue in uh, Rojas Boulevard where Luneta is, no? And I don't know what really happened with our educational system as being hinted by Mr. Lorca earlier. While it is mandated that it become part of our educational system, it is not really integral to our, to our uh, system. I think you uh, one unit or two units of result is not even anymore in the curriculum of the high school students. Maybe not even in the in, in, the, in college. Most of our people are ignorant of our history. Even the government communication system is not promoting our history. 
Takot kasi sila eh. Takot sila na matuto sa ating history. Takot lang mga katoliko for instance na malaman na even before Magellan came to Eastern Visayas, we already had a Trinity. We already believed in uh, uh, Abad Halak. Huh? Just based on our natural intelligence that we were worshipping this Batala and that this Batala was causing the uh, uh, unity of communities and many more. Many people don't know that we were uh, number one preferred his uh, neighbor of China. There, no, nobody almost knows who Sultan Paduka Batara is all about. But there was a Sultan who signed a treaty of tributary independent states with Emperor Yongle of China as early as 1405 and made a state visit and became the first formal diplomat of our country to China, to Beijing, to Peking in 1417. And this is no joke because to be able to travel to China, he mustered a fleet of more than 300 boats. Kasi pag nag-travel kayo na, kailangan meron din mga warships traveling with you. Otherwise, you would be victimized by the pirates. And then they negotiated the Grand Canal from the bottom of Shanghai up to Beijing. And that on his return trip, the Sultan died negotiating the trip back after about uh, three weeks of stay in Beijing. And he died in Shandong province. And right now in Shandong province is his eight hectare memorial, uh, memorial park just for, just to be, you know, burial ground. And this is up to now sustained by the taxpayers of China. Huh? Manicured the mga lawns, maintained the mga buildings. Huh? In fact, this uh, burial ground of Sultan Paduka Batara, together with his concubine, Gemuning, and two children, Wen Hala and, and uh, Wen Hulu, is the number five tourism center in China right now. And that guy was a sultan, a pro Filipino, pro proto Filipino. <laughs> So we were very close because during that time in the old Silk Road, the maritime, the maritime route was transporting from China porcelain tea and uh, what was the third one? <laughs> tea, porcelain, and silk. And then we were bringing <coughs> from below young spices because Napakalayo na ng Java. So yung mga spices na inipon doon sa Molucas, dinadala na sa Hulu. So yung Sultan of Hulu na ang nagdadala sa China. At dinadaanan niyan from the east by the old Silk Road going to the west. Into the what is now known as uh, Eurasia and Africa. Kasali tayo dyan. Can you imagine the Sultan of Sulu being able to afford more than 300, a fleet of more than 300 boats? Big and small? Ganyan kayaman po <laughs> ang Pilipinas. At noong pa, partner na tayo ng malaking bayan na ito. Pero ang nakikita lamang natin ngayon ay yung Siguro after Marcos, even Marcos is uh, yung, yung sense of history. Pati si Marcos demonized 
So by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I just won an award from the um, Association of Philippine-China Understanding, which was uh, organized in 1974. No? To prepare for the normalization of diplomatic relations between China and the Philippines. Yung pong pinirmahan ni mga President Marcos at saka ni, uh, ano, ni Deng Xiaoping. Di na pumunta dito. No? One year before, tinatag itong APCO. And uh, this year lang sila nagsimula ng awards and I was one of the awardees. Uh, somebody headhunted me and nominated me in secret. Nagulat na lang ako. Kawili, meron tayong bagong pagmamalaki. Congratulations. <laughs> Nagulat, na yes. Nagulat na lang ako dito sa award na ito. No? Kasi I am one of those na binabalik ko yung history. Binabalik ko yung connection natin mula sa nakaraan. Ayan, alam niya ni Giancarlo EY. Nung may programa pa ako, wala pa COVID. Carlo, hindi ako makabalik dahil alas 6 nagsisimula yung uh, istasyon ng radyo at bawal yeah. pa ang uh, senior citizen mag-broadcast doon. So, uh, at alam niya ni Carlo EY, no? Na yeah. we always refresh history, we always go back, we always define. Kasi kung hindi tayo babalik sa nakaraan, sabi nga ni Jose Rizal, eh sabi nga ni Duterte, Matitinig tayo ng malalim. <laughs> so yan mga kabansa, no? This, this is the thing, no? We, we are lacking in, uh, even as a government, we are lacking in formalizing how we should know, much know, about our glorious past. Huh? And uh, I am glad to tell you that uh, together with Jing Mable and uh, with the assistance of some Rizalistas from Nueva Ecija, and you know, para mangit ko na Nueva Ecija, etc., 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 kasi doon kami nagmi-meeting. And ito mga traces of history na ito, these gems of history comes back and before we go, uh, I am 73 years old already. I'm also in the pre-departure area already. <laughs> I am doing my share in trying to bring this to mass media and social media para maintindihan ng mga kumbataan natin so that our young will be able to know and treasure our glorious past. Because if we don't know this past, if we don't know Rizal, if we don't know Bonifacio, if we don't know Mabini, anong silbi niyang Malolos Constitution na yan? Wala po. The Malolos Constitution will come to know if we cannot relate it to the very people who died, who sacrificed, who labored, so that it could be set up in January 21, uh, Nung, nung uh, taon na yun, 1899. So this is why there is a disconnect. And I hope more we can invite more and more people into this forum, into this uh, uh, virtual assembly, so that we can uh, accelerate uh, our mission to bring uh, what should be in the future for us what saddens me kasi is hiram tayo ng hiram ng mga modelo na hindi naman angkop sa ating kultura. We have uh, been copying here, copying there, 35 constitution, 74 constitution, 87 constitution, etc. And we lose more as we go on rather than gain. Kaya yan po ang... Uh, Masasabi ko at this point. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Paglinawan. Uh, on behalf of the uh, 1899 Constitution Congress, we'd like to congratulate you for this award from the uh, Philippine Chinese Association. And uh, one last uh, a question, Mr. Paglinawan, is that do you believe that the uh, armed forces of the Philippines now is an extension of the Katipunan Army up to this point in time? Uh, hindi po eh. I, I cannot believe that because uh, um, of course historically there is a disconnect. But I would like to relate more to the doctrines that they are observing. Uh, most of the doctrines that they are observing are really copied from uh, the United States. Although the United States also, by the way, huh, uh, also copied some of doctrines from us. Huh? It, this, this is really a give and take. But what is the Filipino and American in our? Do you know po ba yung, the raid on Kabanatuan where uh, American soldiers were rescued by Filipino guerrillas. Prominent among them are the Hosons, uh, in collaboration with scout rangers uh, that came with the MacArthur. Uh, if I remember right, the name of that of that uh, camp was Pangatian in Kabanatuan. The design of the strategy was designed by the Filipino guerrillas and they gave it to the scout rangers and together they attacked. No? Most of the attack done, uh, most of the Filipinos were put to defend a bridge where they anticipated the Japanese would cross. Uh, but uh, uh, most of the, most of the um, Americans were to were to enter the main uh, entrance. Ito po ang ginawang chapter one ng U.S. Army <laughs> on how to conduct a raid. <laughs> huh? Did you know that that raid on Pangatian in Kabanatuan is chapter one of how to conduct a raid, a guerrilla raid on an encampment? Wala pong namatay doon except one by natural causes. They were all able to save everybody. Um, but most of our PMAers are really graduates one by one way or another by by American uh, ports, Fort Bragg, <laughs> huh? uh, all around Washington, Miami, John. Washington DC uh, to study all these things and uh, although one of them said that we don't really study there anyway because uh, we were we are just being wine, wine and dine eh, ako po ay naging uh, diplomat ng uh, Philippine Embassy for seven years in Washington DC so I know it for a fact that the reason why we keep a military and defense attaché at the embassy is precisely because of this. The other reason is, of course, the sourcing of arms. So, ang masasabi ko lang po is our armed forces is very much Western-oriented. Ang problema sa West, pagka wala ka equipment, if you don't have the ample equipment, 
how can you use your doctrine? <laughs> so uh, just like this F-16s that we are now importing, I was talking to Secretary Delphine Lorenzana, and I told him that as early as 1991, we were negotiating for this, but the Americans would not give us the software, <laughs> would not give us the uh, programs. Because you know, without the software and the programs, that airplane is just hardware. Just as any ship and any submarine will just be hardware. Now, if we are using uh, just like the South Koreans and lately the Malaysians discovered that they could not use their F-18s. Listen to this, Mr. Ramos. The Malaysians yes. could not use their F-18s to attack because uh, if the, they were not given the proper software, and even if they were given the proper software, if you are using an American plane, an American equipment, you cannot attack a U.S equipment. Yan ang problema eh. See? So, uh, both from the viewpoint of history, second, uh, doctrine, third, equipment and material. No? Uh, we are not. We are not. This armed forces of the Philippines is not really descended directly from the Katipunan. Okay. Baka sa Guardia Civil pa. Baka sa Guardia Civil pa. So, uh, yan ang aking sagot dyan. Now, this is why I think now we are sourcing equipment. Um, so I think about, sabi ni, uh, sabi ni Secretary Lorenzana, to about 18 different countries. Iba-iba na po ang ating pinagkukunan. Pagalawa, pinag-aaralan na nila kung paano nila mas magiging mapipilipinize ang Philippine Military Academy. And pangatlo, they're also very willing to also study about the history of the Katipunan if only to learn and serve as a moral booster for our future armed force development. That is my way of addressing that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Palinawan. Anybody? Okay, I recognize uh, Mr. Lorke raising his hand. You recognize. Bienvenido. Uh, Mr. Speaker, point of order. Uh, you have to uh, recognize the priority of raised hands. So, Joe yeah, Pratonce I... <laughs> has, a has a priority over uh, yeah. uh, Bill Lorke. He, right. I, I, okay, Mr. Lorke. But I don't yeah. see Mr. Balse's priority over Ben Lorke. Okay, Mr. Balse. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you for recognizing. I'm sorry. Mr. Balse, because I cannot see, it seems to be I have an eyesight uh, issue here. I cannot see the small uh, frames where anybody who is raising his hand. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Dr. Posadas. Thank you again. Um, just a, a couple of questions um, to Mr. Baglinawan. Uh, first is, it's a good uh, congratulations. First, I'd like to congratulate you and also say hello to a cousin uh, by affinity of mine, Kawili. Uh, now, my question deals with uh, history. I heard that. Uh, Dr. Sun Yat-sen himself was watching the Philippine Revolution and the war, Philippine American War with great hope and optimism with regard to the Philippines becoming another prime example of a former colony achieving independence and becoming uh, a republic and maintaining its being a republic because uh, Dr. Sun Yat-sen also found inspiration in the Philippines and was in fact attempting to send arms to the Filipinos 
อยู่ฮ่องกงอยู่มาริอานาปอนเซด็อกเตอร์ซุนยัตเซนส์ something is a figure in China that quite important because he's the only he's the only sage that can unite the two Chinas Republic of China and the People's Republic of China uh, if you know of any any information about it I'd, I'd, I'd be very interested in finding out uh, so th that's my first question my second question is with regard to your very good observation on the state of tel of uh, uh, communications in the time of the Katipunan. You see, the problem really is at this time, the Philippines is a laggard with regard to internet technology. The Philippines has one of the slowest internet speeds in the world. And it's a pity that it is being kept that way. And uh, because of that, it will be very difficult for us to, to communicate our message to the Filipinos. It will take a long time before the uh, the broadband kicks in, uh, and the last question is: Now that you've uh, you you've inspired me with a thought, maybe this uh, group should also start organizing itself as a school, because uh, given our our ages and combined experience, I think we would make a very excellent faculty for. Uh, an internet university for Filipinos that do not that does not require tuition, this, that that does not impose uh, the stress of getting grades, uh, but is in fact more interested in feeding the hunger for information of Filipinos in order to be uh, to achieve that state of recognition and respect in the family of nations. Thank you. Okay, uh, okay, Mr. President. Uh, uh, Andy. Andy. Mr. President, if I may. Okay, well, uh, I recognize now Mr. Lorke. Was uh, supposedly uh, supposedly uh, it was a, a question was addressed to Ado Paglinawan, point of order, Mr. Speaker. Oh, okay, Mr. Paglinawan, that was the uh, two questions of uh, Mr. Balse. And three questions, sorry. First, three was questions. Sunyat Sen. Second, our state of the internet, and third, why don't we start a school? Okay. Ah, uh, alam po niyo si. Si Sanya Chen was uh, that, uh, basically to, to truncate to the answer call. Sanya Chen basically le led the revolution that overthrew the oppressive Qing dynasty. He was able to achieve this in 1911. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> three years after 1898, no? uh, we did not live that long. Our revolution did not live that long. Um, to 1911, but uh, Rizal at the same time, uh, that, that by the way, that is why Sun Yat Chen is honored as the father of modern China. Uh, Dr. Rizal Rizal at the same time is our national hero. Um, the friendship between them was through Mariano Ponce. In fact, uh, nobody wanted to arm the Filipinos against Spain uh, for a varied reason. But San Yatsen was able to throw uh, Mariano Ponce, committed the uh, two shipments, the one shipment po ng armas. Unfortunately, yung one shipment uh, was lost in a storm. So uh, the second shipment, uh, was either for for fear of being caught was shipped back to Japan 
although I can stand corrected on that if there is any further information. So the friendship between uh, China and, and the Philippines established in Sanyat Chen. Uh, the second question, uh, of course, po, uh, ito nga yung pinaplano namin ng mga risalistas to have a uh, miski na ano lang, miski na hindi formalized school, miski na uh, a 24-7 forum muna, we start with a forum muna on uh, lessons of our history. No? At pangatlo, talagang kailangan-kailangan natin ang communication with our young people. Um, ayan. Um, we, we hope we hope that uh, uh, this is one of the projects that can come up with uh, any one of the think tanks that I am uh, connected with here in the Philippines. So, yan po, uh, Mr. Okay. Balce. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Paglanawan. Can I recognize Mr. Lorke now, please? And uh, Thank you. Dagdag ko lang doon sa nabanggit kanina na yung uh, makonek natin ang Katipunero sa armed forces natin. Uh, if you could remember, nung mga panahon ng uh, Kastila, we have a purely bayanihan system. Siguro, nababasa rin ninyo ang history doon sa Iloilo tungkol sa Bulo Batalyon. In the Manahayang Batalyon, ang gamit lang nila doon ay itak. So itak laban sa baril ng mga Kastila. But because they have the pure bayanihan system, nagkaroon sila ng blood compact. At hanggang ngayon, nandiyan sa Santa Barbara, makikita natin dyan, may, may statwa dyan na nakatayo kung saan na doon nag-ipon-ipon ang mga katipuniros at magkaroon ng mga blood compact. At ang mga ninuno ko ay kasali dyan. So sa madaling salita, because of their bayanihan system and pure unity, nanalo sila doon sa laban ng itak, laban sa baril. Kasi ang ginawa nila, pag nag-atake ngayon sa harap, may mag-atake doon sa likod, may mag-atake din sa tagiliran. So natalo nila yung mga Kastila. Kaya yun na nabanggit namin, even na uh, Kanilo Tayag is also uh, shouting about this, that we need pure ideology and Filipinismo. Na yung, kung may unity tayo, na may, may balik natin yung bayanihan system, napakaganda sana yan. Pero ngayon, ay nagkanya-kanyahan tayo. So, kahit ano man ang gagawin natin, wala tayong mapala dyan sa pagkanya-kanya natin na yan kasi nasabayan pa ng inggit at nasabayan pa ng kung ano-ano na hindi maganda sana. Kaya sabi ko nga, kung may balik natin doon, sa, mabalik tayo sa malulus konstitusyon, kung mabalik natin ang, bayan, ang bayanihan system na magtulungan, huwag yung magsiraan. Uh, yan ang napaka-the best solution to resolve all this problem we are uh, encountering right now. Okay. Excellent point, Mr. Lorke. Anybody else who wants to be recognized? Uh, you have to look at the raised hands. Uh, I, I, could not, I could not see the small uh, frames. Uh, make, because here. you don't have a gallery view, you should take a gallery view in your view choices. That's my okay. suggestion. Then these uh, small things around the speaker's view would be more visible to you and you can see the raised hands. Carlo EY should be recognized because I've been raising his hand for quite some okay, time. Okay, then, Mr. Carlo uh, EY, please, you are now recognized. Okay. I will ask three questions to Mr. Paglinawan. No? What is the significance of his discussions to our nation? Second question is, will you be, would you be available on July 24 World Freedom Rally? And uh, last thing is, what will be the role of the youth in this discussion? I'm having a sound problem. Okay. 
what is the significance of this to our nation? You study this mo kanina ka ano. And the second question is, will you be will you be available on the July 24 World Freedom Rally? And what will be the role of the youth in this discussion on the history of our nation? Mr. President, um, you to answer the first, I will go into the prognosis rather than on the analysis. Uh, kaya po, I will also connect this with uh, Mr. Lorke's remarks. This is the reason why I'm advocating the revival of the La Liga Filipina as a one party under a one party system. Because ang Pilipino po, pulong puro ng pulong puro ng freedoms, pero kulang sa license. Hindi naman responsable sa sarili niyang uh, freedom. But if you have a single party system, much of these disagreements, which we welcome, we welcome opinions from all sides, will be filtered po muna doon sa political party in business sa gobyerno na mismo. Ang nangyayari po kasi sa sa ating Congress ngayon ay nagiging ano eh, grandstand. At yung pagkakahiwa-hiwala at pagkakaiba-iba ng opinion, doon nagsisimula. Kaya ang mga, mostly ang mga discussions ay nagiging personal. Hindi nagiging issue-based. So that is how I may possibly cure the system. Besides, kung single party system tayo, lahat ng mga tao magkukonect from the very bottom to the very top. Because those who will connect to the political party system will be immediately constituted as constituents to the new system. Hindi yung two-party system or multi-party system Well, the discussion ends up in most of the time among Filipinos washing our dirty linen in public instead of coming out with a more superior idea. Uh, pangalwa po, uh, I would just appreciate Mr. E. White if you could uh, message me the invitation and the details of that rally. So that I can fix uh, uh, it into my schedule. The third uh, concern of Mr. Iwai is precisely the young. Uh, kailangan talaga kung ma-organize na natin yung La Liga Pilipina as a proto-singular party for the uh, Malolos Constitution, Uh, system, pwede natin itong simulan sa mga eskwelahan. We can start this among the young first. And I'm sure with a small secretariat uh, doubling with uh, social media, uh, we, we will be able to uh, at least start somewhere. <laughs> Yun lang ako. Yeah, yeah. Wait lang ka, Adon. Din kami ng grupo na na komedya to gising mga dika group kasama ako doon sa komedya na ito at kasama tayong lahat sa grupo na ito siguro ipapaliwanan niya ti jingle ito at ti jing please your your audio So, okay, uh, Jing uh, Manzanillo or 
Jingle my ball. Jingle. Jingle. Jingle to my Are you done, Mr. Yes. He's trying to ask the opinion of Jingle. Yeah, where is Jingle now? He's there. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Okay, I recognize you. Is, is, is our, sir, pag, pag Linawan already done with his speech, I think that he was interrupted by Carlo. I don't think that he's done already with his speech. Uh, Sana po. Sana po siya. Is he done? Is oh. he done already with oh. his uh, message? Uh, actually, as uh, mentioned by Sir Pag Linawan, or for the other, uh, I have already in my mind that uh, his, uh, I because I am not so much with the history, you know. So uh, this is only a simple idea that uh, one political party is uh, good instead of uh, having multiple parties because this political party is number one reason that uh, keep Filipino uh, divided. Because um, and dun yung ano eh, uh, tawag dun na. Solidarity, keep the support in the party, and yung loyalty. So, if you only have this one political party, doesn't matter if how many candidates will be there. Uh, unity, uh, let people decide who will be their choice. And uh, so no, no, there's no like, uh, there's no so as uh, so solid parties that I will support that. They have to support one party. They have to support because the political party will uh, will be used by these uh, foreign people. Then they can make like uh, their shadow, uh, shadow. Parang <laughs> ano? Um, sabi natin yung parang it will start for mga um, pagsusulot. Uh, pagsusulot. So hindi maganda kung meron talaga political party. So I I am very much uh, uh, agree with uh, Sir Sir Ado. Then, like uh, what he said, that uh, if we start this in education, even in the early age, maybe around school, around the uh, uh, senior stage, po na mga elementary grades, so we start para i educate po yung mga bata. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Mr. Speaker, can I uh, have a point of information? Yes, yeah. yeah, I, I would like to address uh, a question both to uh, uh, our speaker, our guest, uh, who uh, <clears throat> the privileged uh, speech of uh, Ado, and also to uh, Congressman Willie Villarama. Please go ahead, um, sir. Ramos. Yes, uh, uh, Congressman Villarama, you've heard what uh, Ado presented to our um, <clears throat> shadow Congress here. And I would like to ask uh, what you think of uh, what uh, Ado uh, talked about, and why is the in your stay in Congress? Uh, why has there been any congressman talking along the same lines as Mr. Ado Paglinawan? And that same question too, I'm addressing to Mr. Ado Paglinawan. Why are the present crop of congressmen, including the young congressmen uh, there, not talking about these things? Okay, ah, uh, alam nyo po, it's uh, ang ating politika, sur survival of the fittest. Eh. It, it is a very service-based uh, system. Bakit nila gustong buhay yan? Yung nakaraan na kongreso, samantalang masayang masaya na sila sa existing congress kung saan sila ay nakikinabang ng malaki, tama po ba yun? Tama. So, hindi, imposible po nga, eh, parang uh, binari nila sarili nila sa paa. And nakikita nyo naman po, ang laki ng mga tinatawag na pork barrel ngayon, yung mga deputy speaker, eh, ako, kung totoo yung itong ilandang bill yun. So, imposible pong mag-i-rewind nila. Imposible yung i-rewind nila. That will be... Uh, Alam na alam na natin karamihan talaga uh, uh, selfish no uh, selfishness greed no e, eto ano etong hinaharap ng mga gustong ng pagbabago it is so difficult especially when we consider that uh, majority of uh, our politicians belong to dynasties 
as uh, proven by the study of uh, Professor Ron Mendoza of Ateneo. So, sa, sa akin po, yun, yun po, ang isang tatayo doon para sabihin na ibalik natin sa 1898 uh, Constitution, eh pagtatawanan lang yun at uh, baka mabu pa sila. Dahil, uh, eh, yun, yun po, nakikita kong... Uh, Uh, y- y- yun po nakikita kong uh, problema. Pero definitely, uh, very legitimate itong ating exercise. Dahil eh, hindi pa naman talaga nabura yung wala namang konstitusyon na sinabing binubura na natin ang uh, 1898 malolos sa uh, uh, konstitusyon. Eh. So, ang uh, solusyon na lang siguro uh, after uh, all these exercises, ay uh, bumuo ng isang malakas na grupo na talagang magkaroon ng uh, constitutional change na. At uh, itulak yung parliamentary uh, ano, parliamentary system. Kung ano man ang mapagkakasunduan ng grupong ito na magaling para sa kabataan natin. Yun lang po. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Ado, want to join there? Mr. Speaker, can Ado uh, be addressed? Yes, uh, from from the yeah. point of uh, uh, at this point in time, I think Mr. Paglinawan has signified his intention of uh, of uh, uh, excusing himself to attend another Zoom meeting. So, uh, after the last question from uh, Benvenido Lorque, then we can probably let Mr. Paglinawan uh, uh, be free to to attend is another meeting. So anyway, Mr. Mr. Ramos, you're recognized. No, I'm just telling that uh, I asked the comment of uh, Mr. Ado Paglinawan on why the present congressman do not think along the lines that he presented to us. Well, medyo cruel itong sagot ko. The reason is because they don't think, period. <laughs> They're so comfortable in their own comfort chairs, no? comfort zones. Uh, there is no dissonance that makes them think. And they have no intentions of uh, improving themselves because of the Tama si Congressman Villarama. Uh, the system has uh, been like this for a long time, and so they've gotten used to it. Baka mapagod sila pag nag pa sila eh. My answer is a little bit sarcastic, but uh, it has a lot of truth in it. Thank you. Thank you. Salamat. Okay. So, Mr. Lorke, you're next. Ang aking suggestion is... Hello. Ang aking suggestion is sa kalagayan ngayon at napakaraming problema na hinaharap ng uh, taong bayan at mismo bayan natin. What I wanted to suggest is uh, first we must declare a revolutionary government. And then we have to use the people initiative to change the constitution. At dahil revolutionary government tayo, we have to abolish Congress. So by doing such, we have also to abolish COMELEC at magumawa tayo ng panibagong komisyon para mapalitan natin ang mga record uh, o listahan ng COMELEC na kung saan sa ngayon uh, sa aking naririnig ay mahigit kumulang sa 12.5 billion ang paddy voters. So kung patuloy natin ito, ito gamitin natin sa 2022, Nagamitin natin itong padded voters para panlinlang sa mga na, mga botante. Walang mabago sa bansang Pilipinas kung magpatuloy ito. However, kung sa ngayon, even the president does not want a revolutionary government, pero kung tayo mga Pilipino ay magdeklara dahil sa atin nang galing ang uh, soberanya. Tayo magdeklara abolish Congress 
Then, let's go back to, let's adapt the 1899 Constitution sa madaling salita. Mabilis natin ma-resolve ang problema na hinaharap natin ngayon. Una-una, ang Constitution 1987 ay hindi na ay nasunod ng mga nakaupo sa gobyerno. They almost violated what was the provision of the Constitution. At kung ano gusto nila, sa nabanggit kanina ni Professor Hill Ramos, wala na nga doon sa sa Constitution. Eh, gumagawa pa sila na nag-constructive resignation si IRAP. So, mahirap ito. So, dahil sa nakikita natin ng mga kamalian, it is now high time to correct. First, we have to correct the system. Second, we have to correct the history of the Republic of the Philippines. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lorke. And now, from the point of order, uh, point of information from uh, Mr. Lorke's statement, uh, Mr. Paglinawan, the reason why I was asking the, co the connection between the Katipunan Army as an extension uh, into the armed forces of the Philippines uh, currently, because uh, the premise, the practical premise, is that uh, when the Katipunan Army, uh, under the leadership of General uh, Luna, uh, fulfill this oath of duty or pledge of allegiance to the 1899 Constitution, does that uh, oath of allegiance or oath of duty as a military officer of the Katipunan Army extend to the current uh, armed forces of the Philippines in the same uh, pre uh, connection or practical premise that uh, the uh, oath of duty or pledge of allegiance continues until the present uh, armed forces of the Philippines. Uh, therefore, we can invoke the uh, Pledge of Allegiance or say uh, implicit uh, oath of allegiance or oath of duty of the armed forces of the Philippines now to uh, enforce the validity of the still alive uh, 1899 Constitution. Okay. Uh, Doon po sa question ni Mr. Lorke, masasabi ko lang, Eh, nakakaisa naman tayo for a revolutionary process, whether by people power or by uh, coup d'etat or a combination which we will call a revolutionary government, anything that will uh, bring back into a zero base our system so that we can build it uh, from the bottom up and return to the Malolos Constitution. Uh, will do. Ang akin lang po dito ay uh, number two, how to make this feasible. Uh, maraming ideas. Uh, number three, kailangan when that happens, we are part of the control. Kasi baka ho yung mga <laughs> mga dati ang mag-control. So, wala po tayo pagtatalunan niya sa revolutionary form of a uh, process of uh, shifting the paradigm of our governance. Uh, dito naman po sa question ni Mr. Posadas, ang problema po kasi Mr. Posadas ay may truncation eh. Hindi konektado yung uh, uh, Philippine Bill of 1902, hindi konektado yung 1935 Constitution na truncate po yung ano eh, malolos constitution. So it did not connect to anything. So I think it will be for the better purpose of uh, of the armed forces. To be, kasi kanilang tradisyon eh, binabase nila. Kasama na yung American uh, uh, era eh. Kasama na yung pati yung sa mga service ng Japanese and all that stuff, no? Uh, we, we, this, this is just, I think, a matter of, uh, of coming up with the proper uh, recognition on the positive side. Uh, and then, kaya nga kailangan ng revolutionary government eh, So that this, uh, the perspectives of these different constitutions and these different doctrines and these different... Uh, Original, original origins of the armed forces uh, is able. Kasi chronologically, part naman po siya ng uh, history natin, eh, itong armed forces natin. Part naman yan, eh, chronological to the Katipunan. But 
do they really represent the aspirations and ideals of the Katipuna? Napakalayo po. Uh, so anyway, these distinctions are just uh, uh, for purposes of uh, argumentation. Uh, the more important thing is how they can be brought together in to, towards the new system. Yes. Yan po lamang aking masasabi, pasensya na po kayo kung magpapaalam na ako, but I have to be on another... One, one last point, Mr. Paglino, a very important uh, urgent point. Uh, on the premise okay. that uh, notwithstanding the, uh, the, uh, the connection of the Katipunan Army into the current uh, armed forces of the Philippines, let's uh, now, can we invoke, which we can, I think, I believe, that under the 1987 constitution, there's the provision of the president's out of office to redress people's grievances. Now, the people's grievances right now, the, pop, the, the movement that's going on to become popular, I think, will be a mass uh, rally or a petition or a publicity to petition President Duterte to redress the now people's uh, will to change the government system or, or constitution. Our petition, a resolution, calls for President Duterte and or the armed forces of the Philippines to enforce the people's will to change the constitution into a parliamentary federal government, into a complete change of form of government. So therefore, if President Duterte doesn't address the people's grievances, it's now incumbent upon the armed forces of the Philippines because our petition, a resolution, says that President Duterte and or the Armed Forces of the Philippines to uh, enforce the validity of the 1899 Constitution through a revolutionary government. Will that go? Well, I, 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 wish, I wish that is the doctrine that will uh, um, <laughs> supersede whatever it is that will be on our favor. Kasi that will not be on our table. Kasi po, uh, mahihirapan ang military na kumilos wala ang Pangulo because of the doctrine also that the President is the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. The primordial consideration, however, that you are mentioning is that they are the protector of the state and the people. So these are conflicting uh, Pag in apply na natin on the ground, it may conflict because some people would say, no, hindi kasama ang presidente rito, so hindi kami sasali. Yung iba naman, they say, Miske, kaya hindi kasali ang presidente dyan, uh, we can supersede it because we are the protector of the people in the state. But these are conditionalities uh, that uh, will... Um, happen only uh, on the ground na. Just as yung People's Power Revolution uh, created a regime change in 1986. Wala naman yan sa Constitution. Wala naman provision yan. Wala naman provocation. It just happened. Now, I'm not saying whether that's right or wrong, but it, it affected the change of regime. Now, we are really after here anything whatsoever. We are basically an act of nature. Basically, a lindol sa buong Pilipinas. Basically, a state of emergency, just like of the magnitude of COVID-19, to create a situation for which there would be a paradigm change. So I am all for that. But on the ground, sabi ko nga, medyo may mga realities that we have to face. Marami salamat po. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aldo Paglinawan. Maraming salamat, Aldo, sa pagpaunlak mo sa akin na request na mag-deliver ka ng privilege speech. Marami kaming natutunan ngayong araw sa mga pagsasaliksik na nagawa mo. At sana ay uh, magpatuloy ito sa ating mga darating na mga uh, Feb, uh, Saturday meetings. Mr. Speaker, so I would like to have a, a grand applause for... Uh, Thank you, Mr. Paglinawan. Okay, Gil. Yes, Mr. Speaker. 
we can continue to discuss what uh, uh, Ado Paglinawan shared with us. Uh, there is no uh, need to yeah. uh, no, I, I, uh, I, I, stop talking about it. Yeah. But uh, if you have more questions, uh, I will try to field some of them because I have been uh, in communication with Ado for a long time. We have known that, each other for uh, several decades now. Okay. So I can uh, proxy for him in answering points that you would like to clarify. Oh, I think, uh, Mr. Speaker, I mean, <laughs> Gil, um, okay, can we put that on the on on the table for next uh, session? So we no, can no, uh, freshen no, up and this, uh, because our session here, our session hours, uh, we are running from eight o'clock. Uh, in the morning to 12 noon and so, we are still um one and a half hour away from 12 noon we still have one and a half hours to continue our discussion and if uh, nobody else is uh, asking for clarifications we can proceed to a presentation that i would like to do regarding uh, uh, reorganizing the uh, philippine economy under the principles that we have been espousing in our shadow Congress here. Well, go ahead, since we have the time, and go ahead. Uh, uh, there is around. a question pending. Mr. Carlo Ewai has raised his hand, so why don't you recognize him, Mr. Okay, Speaker? Mr. Carlo Ewai, you're recognized. Okay. I good thing, no, 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 no. I think we should also, I am suggesting that we should also join him on on this radio program, um, to discuss more of this more than Anong background nitong ating constitution? Ano yun, ano yun, uh, Carlo? Background ng ano? Ano yun, ano Kapag talaga siguro i-join, i-pasabihan din si Kado na join kami bukas sa kanya. Uh, gusto niyo rin imbitahin si Ado Pagdinawan sa Gising Maharlika, yung bang plano mo? Hindi, pwede samaan natin siya sa Amba Escort, iba pa. At pwede rin ah. si Kado sa Gising Maharlika team. Pwede. Ano yung sinasuggest mo? Samaan natin siya either next month, bukas or next Sunday sa Amba Escort, iba pa, on radio. Oh, yeah, we, 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 listen, we can listen to him all the time. We have to promote. Uh, natin ito. Mr. Speaker, I uh, would suggest that uh, uh, sometimes we have to uh, have our uh, people have focused questions and then only one announcement about something. I think Mr. Iwa is suggesting that we support the uh, radio program of uh, uh, Maestro Ado Pagrinao. Is that correct, uh, Mr. Carlo? Not only that, we will also join Sana, kung pwede. Mag-join tayo sa... For, via Zoom. Oh, may Zoom ba siya? Si, may Zoom ba si Ado? Siguro ang Radio Pilipinas mismo. Baka tanongin ko si Ta Ado. Yan, yeah, correct. Uh, you have to, we have to have Zoom. We cannot just be on audio for radio participation. Magbabayad ka niyan, sisingiling ka. Oh. Mga black timers yan, may mga sponsors yan. Hindi oh. yan ito. Can we ask? Uh... Habang uh, wala pa tayong pera, dito lang muna tayo sa mga libreng paraan. Yes, yes. Oh. Ganun lang yon. Wala tayong pera. We are... Diba nakita nyo sa presentation ni, uh, ni Ado Paglinawan? Nakita nyo na kahit na noon, yung ating mga revolutionary hero, sila lahat, ang pinag-problema din nila, kahit lumalaban din sila, yung paglikom ng pera para makapala, maka masustentuhan nila ang kanilang paglaban. Yung problema ngayon ay katulog din ngayon sa atin. Para tayo yung lumalaban, may gusto tayong gawin. Ang, ang ginagawa natin, kung anong ating oras, uh, yun lang ang kaya natin i-contribute din yun. Ang mga ibang merong konti, gumagastos tayo dito sa mga paglisensya ng Zoom, gumagastos tayo ng pagkakuha ng mga YouTube subscriptions para mas marami tayong ma maabot na mga tao sa ating mga ginagawa. So ngayon, itong ating ginagawa, itong ating uh, Shadow Congress, 
Meron tayong YouTube channel, yung 1899 uh, Congress. Meron tayong mga shadow Facebook uh, groups na I would like to recognize here the efforts of uh, Mel Lugo. He is the one here right now who is a co-host taking care of the technical problems here. Ang ginagawa niya sa libre niyang technical services, kinakabit-kabit niya itong lahat. Itong ating Congress ngayon ay naririnig simultaneously sa parang simulcast sa lahat ng Facebook groups o Facebook uh, pages na kinukonekta ni Mel sa atin. So itong mga ginagamit nating usapan, kahit na konti lang nakikita niyo yung views, dahil sa marami yan, tumitingin, nakikita lahat yan sa lahat ng mga Facebook pages. Later on, gumawa rin si Mel Lugod ng isang uh, ating uh, uh, alternate uh, website just in case shutdown tayo ng uh, 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 Facebook dahil sa maaring hindi na nagugustuhan yung gusto natin, ay uh, meron pa rin tayong avenue na makapag-sabi uh, ng ating mga mensahe sa mga tao. Andyan si Mel Lugod, nagpapakita ng kanyang view, ayan siya. Siya ay... Uh, Uh, matinik na teke at uh, kina, ako yung natutuwa at siya tumutulong sa atin. Eh baka kung yeah. singilin ka, Carlo, baka singilin ka kahit kasama mo siya sa gising mahali ka. Kung singilin ka ni Mel ng uh, bayad sa kanyang technical services, baka hindi mo kayang bayaran yan. Kaya yung rika. Ganun ang sinasabi ko. Kung anong kaya natin gawin, gawin natin. Ngayon, pa later on, yeah. sabi nga nila, di ba nakita mo, sabi nga ni uh, Ado Paglinawa, nung ang Laliga, Pilipina, at saka yung mga probinsya, uh, yung, uh, yung councils nila nagsimula ng mag manguha ng pera, nagkaroon na ng mga problema, kaya sila kaya nagdisbando sila. So yung ganong klaseng pag-raise ng funds, problema na yan noon, problema pa rin ngayon. All the iba na ang sitwasyon mm -hmm. ngayon, yun pa rin ang problema natin. And we will try to solve that within our circumstances. Kaya itong simula natin, yeah, yeah. we talk about these things, pero later on, syempre, pag mag-uusap tayo, may kailangan tayong gawin dito, o kaya pa natin mag-contribute ng ganitong amount para magawa natin to. So, ganun ang magiging usapan natin dito. But first, we have to come to a point where we recognize the importance of what we are doing. Kasi, kung base, kung, katulad ni Mel, <coughs> halimbawa, kung hindi siya naniniwala sa ginagawa natin, siya ba ay magbo-volunteer na tumulong sa atin technically? At a certain point, pag uh, lumalim ng ating usapan dito at dumami na rin tayo, magkakaroon tayo ng punto na mag-uusap tayo, o oh, itong ating dapat gawin sunod. Katulad ng sinasabi ni Ado Pagdinawan, kailangan magkaroon tayo ng mga La Liga uh, Pilipina Youth Chapters sa lahat ng mga uh, university ng Pilipinas. Ayun ay uh, masisimula natin sa mga volunteer-volunteer ng mga estudyante. Pero later on tayo, kailangan sustentuhan natin yan kasi yung mga estudyante, allowance lang naman yan eh. Ang kanilang uh, pera dyan. Paano nila masusustentuhan yung mga organization efforts sa mga campus nila nang walang tumutulong? Tayo ay dapat tumulong sa kanila. Yun namang mga mayayamang mga, mga estudyante sa Tenayo de Manila na mga anak ng mga oligarto. May allowance yan at 30,000 pesos a month. Mas mataas pa sa sweldo ng teacher. Eh mga anak ng legal ko yun, hindi yun mag-organize ng mga aktivistang organisasyon. Ang organize nun, mga glee club at kung ano ng mga kasayahan para masaya ang kanilang college life. O, yan ang ating uh, katotohan ang dapat nating harapin sa ating ginagawa. We have to have a critical mass. A critical mass that later on will convert the quantity of... Uh, uh, quantity of uh, approval for the group into uh, qualitative action. Yan sure. ang usual dialectics ng quantity and quality. Pero huwag na tayo mag-usap ng dialectics. Mga gumagamit ng usual yung mga mayabang na komunista kaya ayaw tayong gumaya sa kanila. Uh, simple lang ang pag-usap natin. Kung anong ating gustong gawin, later on, pag marami na tayo, magkakaroon niya ng mga tao na bukunot. Pero yung mga iba dyan, kahit mayaman, hindi bubunot kasi malalim ang bulsa nila eh. Kahit na anong bunot nila, hindi nila maabot ang pera nila eh. Yun ang sinasabing deep pockets but nothing to offer. Kasi ayaw talagang maniwala sa atin. Pero kahit na yung katulad ni Ben Lorke, kahit hindi masyadong malalim ang bulsa niya, bumubunot yan si Ben Lorke kung magastos yan. Oh. Tayo rin, si Dr. Posadas ganun din kung magastos. Kanya-kanya lang tayo kung anong kaya natin. Darating ang oras na dadami tayo, yun ang ating uh, paraan later on 
kukuha tayo ng mga susuporta sa atin. And there are many ways yeah, yeah. to do it. The important thing now is just to have more and more people uh, learning about this idea. Kasi ano ang ginawa sa konstitusyon na yan? Yung ating legal structure sa Pilipinas, panay papet ang mga lawyers. You know, a lawyer is a priest code of the establishment. Ayun, ano ang nagre-recognize ng establishment natin? Hanggang doon lang sa 1935 constitution ang kanilang legal recognition. There is no legal recognition for the implications of legislative precedence of the acts of the of the Malolos Congress. There is none of that. And there is no recognition for any of the uh, propositions that are enacted in the Malolos Congress. They are not recognized. Why are they not recognized? Because the conquering power, the Americans who took over the country in 1898-99, they want the memory of this action of the people erased from our memories as a people. They don't want their 1935 constitution to be called a puppet, a puppet uh, American constitution. In the same manner that the, the Laurel constitution is a puppet Japanese constitution. In the same manner that the restored Commonwealth constitution after 1945 is a Laurel Langley American imposed constitution. To be able to do that, the Americans ejected Luis Taruk and three other congressmen from Congress who were opposing parity rights. So this 1945 restored Commonwealth Constitution was nothing more but an American imposed constitution again. Marcos tried to correct this. He tried to Filipinize this thing, but then it was flawed by the fact that his 1973 constitution is a constitution that was transmogrified from the original 1971 constitution. And there was uh, some legal uh, questions about the way it was ratified by the people. Then comes the 1987 Constitution. The 1987 Constitution is nothing more but an American protectorate constitution from a particular uh, realistic, real politic point of view. Because if the Americans did not kidnap Marcos to Hawaii, do you think Corey would be able to declare a 1987 revolutionary government with the Marcos in Hawaii? He would not be, she would not be able to do that. So it was the American hand which allowed Cory to do it. In 1989, when the forces of Enrile and uh, <coughs> Gringo had control of the military resources to dominate the nation, the Americans authorized through acting President Dan Quayle over flights and a shooting down of a Philippine Air Force pilot to, give, uh, to get back and protect Cory Corazon Aquino government. So the 1987 constitution is in fact a de facto American protectorate constitution. What makes it worse is the fact that this constitution has now been uh, mutilated and honored more in the breach than the observance. As I was talking earlier in our meeting, this 1987 constitution right now is just a camouflage for a government of men and women. It's no longer a government of law. Why? There are things that are in the constitution which this group of people controlling our country do not do. What are these things? First. The Constitution of 1987 said, you must enact a political dynasty law. But did they do that? They did not. Yeah, also the American, this uh, 1987 Constitution also says, during this time of crisis, you should impose uh, special measures to take over public utilities and mitigate the uh, sufferings of the people. It is in Articulo 12. It is in the Constitution. Are they doing it? They are not doing it. And then there are things that are not in the Constitution which they are doing. The process of impeachment and replacement of the president is clearly stated in the Constitution to be just impeachment. What happened with that? They created and invented through a hilarious Davide court the uh, this fiction of constructive recognition, which was never ratified by the people in 1987. It is not in the Constitution, but they did it. Okay, what is not also in the Constitution? What is not in the Constitution is medical emergencies, which is now being done by Duterte, forcing people to be uh, inoculated even if they don't want to. So these things that are not in the Constitution, they are doing. Things that are in the Constitution, which they should do, they are not doing. So this is just a government of men and women who does their thing 
because they do they want to do the thing because they can do it that is the thing they do it because they can do it to hell with the welfare of the people that is the basic thing that we have to um, talk about when you talk about constitutionalism because constitutionalism is higher than any particular constitution. Constitutionalism is the recognition of the fact that a particular constitution emanates from the people. That the constitutionalism principle is based on the rule of law. It is based on the fact that the people are, the people's welfare is the highest law of the land. And that is why they are able to create a constitution. When a particular constitution is used by a people or by a group of people to oppress the people who are supposed to have created it for their own purposes, then that particular constitution under the principles of constitutionalism should be discarded, should be shredded, and should be overthrown. But since we are a peaceful group, we could not advocate it just uh, that, that directly. But we can always peacefully ask, the enforcers of the people's will, the monopolists of the political armed force to withdraw their allegiance from a particular constitution and bring it, bring this allegiance to another constitution. And we have been gifted, we have been gifted by our founding fathers with an 1899 constitution that has never been abrogated, that never been abrogated by our people or by succeeding constitutions. Why, was that, why did that happen? Because in 1935, the presiding officer of the Constitutional Convention of 1935, that American-sponsored convention, was uh, Claro Embreto. But the deputy speakers of Claro Embreto were all former revolutionaries. And in the 1930s, the world was in turmoil. Uh, J Japan was emerging as a power in Asia. He was, uh, Japan was ranting against America, European and white man colonialism in Asia. And there are movements already in, the, in, the, in Europe where we're in, uh, Mussolini and Hitler were rising. So there was trouble. So our forefathers made sure the, the, uh, these people who were in the revolutionary government who were also delegates to the 1935 constitution made sure there was no abrogation of the 1899 constitution because they thought that if things change in the Southeast Asian area, if things happen and it changes, what will happen is that they may be able to revert back to the 1935 constitution. But when General Homa arrived, he was with General Ricarte, our uh, former chief of staff of the uh, Philippine Revolutionary Army. And then uh, you will see that the reason why you see General Aguinaldo in a uniform of, an, of a Japanese officer because immediately the former revolutionaries that were with Ricarte banded together and sided with the Japanese on the basis of the fact that the enemy of my enemy is my friend. That was why most of our revolutionaries became what you called in the post-war era when Americans regained control and power, collaborators. But they were not collaborators, they were just being pro Filipino. However, they were frustrated by the fact that the Japanese did not adopt the 1899 constitution. They were not allowed to use it. Instead, the Japanese created another puppet constitution, which is the Laurel 1942-43 constitution. And they killed Chief uh, Justice Abad Santos, who did not want to go along with them. So they got Associate Justice uh, J.P. Laurel to be the president of that republic. So this is the history that I'm talking about. This kind of history you will not hear being told by law professors and things like that. From their point of view, from their point of view, this, consti this constitutional legality ends with the 1935 constitution, which is in fact a US puppet constitution signed by Franklin Delano Roosevelt and Manuel El Quezon was just a photo bomber observing it on the sidelines. That is our 1935 constitution, but that is the main guidance and the top guidance of the legal priesthood in the Philippines. After they go to that constitution, the, the one that they appeal to now are international precedents coming from American jurisprudence and even the American constitution. Hindi sinasali sa historiahan yung ating history ng 1899 constitution. And that is what we have to break. We have to break that isolation 
of the 1898-1899 Constitution and bring it into the consciousness of our current generation. Re-educate our people. This is our Constitution. This is the reflection of our full sovereignty as a free people. Let us use it, get back to it, use it as a reset button, modernize it with amendments, and make it the new Constitution for a new Philippines. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hill Hermos. I am ready okay. for questions, if anybody would like to ask me questions. Yes, Mr. Lorke, you're recognized. Mr. Iway is also raising his hand. Oh, Mr. Liway, go ahead. Mr. Iway, you're recognized. Okay. Siguro may suggest po na no, madandan dan sa point na ito no, na dapat talaga tutukan natin to itong, itong constitution din. Ito ang mahalagang bakit para sa akin. Ang, ang tanong naman dito, ano kaya ang pwedeng madawa nito para ma-resolve pa na mga problema ng ekonomiya ng ating bansa? Mr. Ramos. Okay, I have a, uh, we are now at uh, the last hour, it's already, I think, 11 o'clock, right? Is that, what's the time right now there? In, 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 the, in Manila time. It's, uh, it's about uh, 11 o'clock. Yeah. Yung tanong ni Carlo is about uh, economics. And I have a presentation ready for that. But I think that presentation alone would take about an hour and interpolations for that would take another uh, hour or two. So we should reserve that for the next session on Saturday. So I will answer your question in full on the economic implications of what we're doing next Saturday when I make a point of privilege speech in our Congress. So uh, let's do that for the coming July 9 session. And I will answer your question on economics in full. Do you have any other questions I have left behind, Mr. Iwa? Okay, acknowledge. Mr. Lorca, then, your last question. I, I I don't have any question about okay. uh, the presentation. So we take up the uh, rest of the uh, the motion now to uh, table the uh, privileged speech of uh, Gil Ramos on the table about his economic uh, plan uh, under the 1899 Constitution, if ever it becomes our Constitution, the highest law of the land to change our government completely from presidential to federal parliamentary government and the connection between his economic plan and the under the new governance of the 1899 constitution. A point of clarification, so, Mr. Speaker. It's just a uh, presentation of how to reorganize the Philippine uh, economy to make it more responsive to the main needs of the people. What then can be done as a counter to that uh, motion to table it is for me to start it and you will hear it you can study it and you can i can give you copies of it after this and you can interpolate me in the next session on july 9. excellent I can suggestion. It right now for an hour okay good so we'll have a um a advance or forwarded copy uh, no i can present it right now and after the presentation i can give you a powerpoint okay. slides well for it so since there's no more question, I uh, declare now that this uh, session for today is officially closed until such time that next Saturday uh, and after reviewing the text of the uh, uh, privilege. No, no, I was, I was proposing, Mr. Speaker, that I can present it now. We have an hour left. Oh. And then you can then study it with the PowerPoint slides I will send to you. And then you can give me uh, questions about it. Oh, Mr. Bill, okay. uh, Congressman Villarama wants to talk. Yeah, uh, excuse me. Go ahead. Uh, just Villarama. to mag, uh, comment to sa mula pa, noon tayo nag no, about uh, Malolos Constitution, etc. cetera. Uh, Rebgov, et cetera. Ang, ang nakikita ko po kasing uh, problema natin ay uh, kung masyado po tayong uh, Ah, matapang o galit, no? 
Okay lang po yun. Pero risk your time for everything eh. Kasi tinan nyo po na yan sa EDSA 1 at EDSA 2. Hindi naman po nakahanda ng Pilipino para magsilbi honestly, makadyos, makabayang, makamahirap. So nagkawindang-windang din eh. So what I'm trying to say, it's okay to, let's say, bear arms or whatever, no? Kung na-prepare na po natin yung kabataan and even ourselves to hubarin natin ang uh, greed, greed, greed sa ating mga katawan, the kumpari system, kamag-anak system, no? Dahil uh, kung hindi po natin matatanggal yan sa ating uh, konsyensya, sa ating puso, uh, babalik at babalik din po ang mga problema ng we are now trying to trying to solve so importante po talaga itong uh, ginagawa ni Lido dahil uh, hopefully kung lumaki na lumaki ang grupo nito uh, we can always uh, hope na yung mga miyembro natin na kabataan makikita nila na magiging successful lang ang isang bansa Gaya ng Vietnam, Singapore, no? Korea, kung talaga siniseryoso nila yung pagiging makatao at makadyos. Otherwise po, wala, tinan nyo po nangyari. Martial law, EDSA 1, EDSA 2. Puntik pa nagkaroon ng EDSA 3. Wala naman po na, wala naman pagbubago nakita natin eh. Parang change court lang ng mga oligarko eh. Uh, de, uh, maliwanan po yun. Yung ta- is, may nagsabi, I cannot recall, the tyrants of today, no, the heroes of today will be the tyrants tomorrow. And uh, even our history, Europe, etc., ganyan din nangyayari. No? Uh, kahit na dito sa ating bansa, uh, yung mga nangangako, napapako. Uh, yun lang po, uh, Professor, ang aking... Uh, uh, ano ang aking pong uh, ibig sabihin sa ating grupo. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, may I respond to that? Yes. Well, it, it's uh, I agree that that is the that the usual uh, the usual uh, conflict between evolutionary processes and revolutionary processes. It's a matter of time. And sometimes the people are not ready for that because there are a lot of anecdotes for instance in the an American South that after uh, Abraham Lincoln uh, signed the uh, emancipation uh, emancipation decree freeing the blacks there were so many blacks in plantations who didn't want to be to, who didn't want to become free they don't want to leave their master they want to remain as slaves because they were so accustomed to being slaves they're so comfortable about being slaves they were so afraid of freedom and there are instances also in uh, in, in in history where uh, pag binigla mo ang isang uh, grupo ng tao ay eh, uh, magkakaroon ng mga social aberration sa process ng kanilang interaction sa bawat isa. However, given that fact, it is also uh, something na uh, we could not go into a hand-wringing resignation na uh, ganun talaga yan, kahit na EDSA 1, EDSA 2, EDSA 3, laging ganun naman ang resulta. We can always say that there was some progress made, but not enough. So the important thing is to be able to uh, increase the ingredients that would make uh, the changes palpable and uh, enough to sustain hope so that the future generations can carry it on. What was the tragic thing that the Americans did to us in our 1890 experience was that they cut us off. They cut the generations of Filipinos that followed after from admiring and understanding the heroism of those people who sacrificed their lives for the nation so that it could produce an 1899 constitution that we could be proud of. And we could be proud of, of it. If you look at the documents, it's a very wise document. And uh, you must realize that these people are young people, nine, uh, 30, 30 years old and below. The oldest was uh, Mabini and Rizal. They were there at the heat of this thing. And uh, they, 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 they have sacrificed this, but the Americans cut a cost. Even, even Emilio Aguinaldo, with all his imperfections of killing uh, Bonifacio, killing uh, Antonio Luna, he also had his points. 
of being the only person who was matapang enough to put together all of those people na mga balimbing lahat and uh, wield them into a force to be reckoned with by the Americans, although he had mistakes already as criticized by Mabini in the presentation of our guest speaker today. Even then, without his uh, dictatorial powers and promulgated the 1899 Constitution, we would not have a date of promulgation of January 23, 1899. And we would not have been gifted also by the staff officers that he had, who circled around Caro and Recto to stop the Constitution of 1935 from abrogating the 1899 Constitution. So all of those things, and all of this uh, General Ricarte also, although he is branded as a collaborator, was the first to recognize that we have to have a uh, military force that would be loyal only to the Filipinos and would always uh, have the Filipino as the interest of the Filipino at heart above it. We were later, this, this group of people were demonized and uh, with the advent of uh, the, Thomas, uh, the, uh, the Thomasite invasion, wherein our uh, Spanish uh, culture was replaced with an American culture, we were never able to read all of this beautiful, ingenuous, uh, not ingenuous, but uh, very, very wise uh, documents that our Spanish, our Spanish speaking heroes produce. We are not able to, le to read them in their original. But now we have enough translations of it in the Tagalog and the Filipino language, and we should study these documents now because this is a gift to us uh, by our heroes. This is a gift that we could use as a legal interregnum to create a reset button, to create a new start from which that evolution that uh, Congressman uh, Willy Villarama is mentioning can be followed and built on. But if we are evolving from a past that is sort of fractured, ang evolution natin may problema. Pero kung nag bumanat muna tayo ng isang reset button na maganda, kasi napagkayarihan natin na dapat yan ang bagong panimula natin, yung evolution na mangyayari dyan, kasi hindi naman perfecto yan kaagad, Ito sabi nga ni Congressman Willie na the tyrants of uh, tomorrow were the, were, the, were the heroes of yesterday. And that was a different way of saying it. But with this kind of mo uh, moral consciousness and heroic examples that can be understood by our young people, the, the likely possibility is that there will be a, uh, a, a, a trickle-down effect of this heroism going forward. Did we ever have a president of the Philippines who said, Kung si Rizal kaya nakaupo dito sa aking upuan ngayon, ano kaya ang gagawin niya? Never. Kung si Bonifacio kaya nandito, ano kaya ang gagawin niya? Never. We don't have that kind of history. Ang ating mga example, mga American presidents, mga ganon, ganon, ganon. Maabang meron tayong mga sariling mga bayani na dapat nating tularan kasi nakuntul yung ating pag-recall ng ating istorya. Bakit natin sinaselebra ang... ang, ang uh, ating araw ng kalayaan as uh, June 12, kung hindi natin bibigyan ng pansin ang 1899 Constitution na kasama ng pagdeklara nun. Bakit natin isisilibra ang kamatayan ni Dr. Jose Rizal na siyang nagudyok sa ating mga kababayan na lumaban sa Kastila at uh, magkaroon ng ganitong klaseng kongreso ng 1898 at gumawa nitong 1899 Constitution? Bakit natin isilibra ang kabayanihan nila ng ating mga bayani kung ang dokumentong ginawa nila sa kanilang pag, pagsasakripisyo ng kanilang buhay ay hindi natin binibigyan ng pansin? Hindi, mga ipokrito tayo lahat. Pagsabi natin, June 12, balaya na tayo mula pa ng 1898. Oh, wala. Kasi may kasinulingan kasama. Limang pang taon na Pinahirapan pa rin tayo ng mga Amerikano at ginoyo tayo. Ang mga mina na dating hawak ng mga, Amer ng mga Espanyol, sila ang nag-take over with American parity rights. We are poor, the Filipinos are poor because the Filipinos have been alienated from the natural wealth that should be theirs. Why should just a piece of paper make somebody the owner of so many mines when those minerals are supposed to be owned by all of us? And this can be done with examples in the world like the is that oil of Norway, which uh, wherein all the people of Norway are the owners of the oil minerals of Norway. And these are not communist countries. These are countries which recognize that the wealth given to a people should be owned by the people and that should be privately appropriated. 
That is the reason for our poverty. But does these people from World Bank and IMF know how to analyze our poverty that way? No. They have many reasons and many excuses to analyze it, but not pointing out the reasons why. Because this wealth was alienated from us. Binasbasan ng Kastila. Wala nagbasbasan ng Kastila. O, sa amin na lahat yan. Hindi na sa inyo yan. Pagbalik na pagdating ng Amerikano, oi, kayong mga praile at saka pa nagalit sa mga revolusyonaryo. Huwag niyong bigyan ng uh, pera yung mga revolusyonaryo yan. Re-recognize namin ang inyong mga properties ng simbahan, yung sinasabing mga prior lands. At kayong mga mayayaman dyan na mayroong intumienda uh, titles, i-recognize -re namin yan as Torrance titles. Basta hintuan ninyo ang pagbigay ng pera kaila General Malvar at kay General Macario Sakai. Kasi hindi naman niyang presidente bandido yan. And they killed the third president of our republic, Macario Sakai, as a bandit. Those things are our history which should be recalled and should be understood by our people. But do we talk about this? Does our history teachers talk about this? They talk about dates, declarations, things like that. But the drama, the human drama involved, the heroism, the sacrifices, this is not being taught to our young people. And they should understand this. They should know that before them, young people just like them in their 30s, 28 years old, 25, 22 years old, see uh, Jacinto, they sacrificed their lives. They fought for a better country, which was aborted by the imperialism of the of the of the Americans at the time because it was the norm to, to be colonizers before, but that was a, a deep frustration among, uh, among Americans themselves who sided with the Filipinos, including, Paul, uh, including, uh, including uh, uh, this guy uh, who, was the, who offered $20 million just for the U.S. government to set the uh, Filipinos free. The three speeches, uh, the three candidacies of uh, William Jennings Bryan attacking the colonization policy of the Philippines. The, uh, the very passionate position papers and articles written by Mark Twain. So what? The Filipino Americans, I'm telling them, be involved in this fight. Don't be ambivalent because you are Americans now, or Filipino Americans, because Americans who were pure Americans at the time when our country was being colonized were fighting for our country. You should fight for this country too right now to free us from these globalist processes which is forever colonizing our country kahit na hindi na tayo formal colonies. And we should start doing that. And that's why more and more people should talk about this. More and more people should document the data about this and publish them in journals, publish them in newspapers, and talk about this in the natural dialects of our people. Thank you. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Mr. Villarama, nothing to say. Any uh, question? Congressman Villarama, I think, has something to say. Okay, Congressman Villarama, please uh, be recognized. Ah, you are muted. You have to unmute yourself. You cannot be heard. Okay, may proposal po ako. Dahil pinag-usapan po natin yung uh, eight malolos constitution, hindi po ba? Yes, correct. Okay. Bakit hindi po natin hanapin yung mga apu-apuhan, apu sa tuhod, yung mga miyembro doon para hanapin natin yung medyo may hilig sa pagmamahal sa bayan? Ipunin natin dahil, dahil uh, his history ang kanilang mga kanununuan. Eh. It, would, it would be a very nice uh, gesture. Kung yung mga kaapu-apu po nung mga mga pumirma nung mga delegates eh makasama natin it will be eh, not an easy job but we can start looking for them no? and uh, invite them to be a member at uh, makinig sumali dito sa ating uh, Saturday uh, webinar uh, yun lang pong uh, uh, proposal ko dahil uh, inahanap po natin yung maintindihan ng kabataan ng magandang kasaysayan ng ating mga bayani. We can start looking for uh, the relatives of the delegates who drafted uh, the first uh, Philippine Constitution. Ilan po? Mr. Lorke, thank you, Ms. Congressman Villarama. You're recognized. Uh, Maganda yun dahil uh, 
mga three times kami nag-usap ng uh, apo ni General Sakai. So kung minsan siguro dapat lang uh, maimbitarin natin siya. Pero panahon ito ngayon dahil nasa konstitusyon ang sinasabi na all institutional uh, all educational institution has to adapt or has to teach or has to uh, teach the student about constitution dapat panahon lang na ituro ang constitution simula 1899 hanggang sa 1897 1987 i mean para malaman ng mga estudyante kung ano ang katotohanan ano ang history ng ating bayan pero dahil itong constitution na ito na sinasabi ko na article 14 section na uh, 3 ay nakaligtaan ng ating mga educational uh, institution ituro sa mga bata. Dapat ngayon panahon na na ibahin nila ang kanilang pananaw at ituro ito para malaman natin kung saan tayo nanggaling. Dahil may kasabihan ng sino mang hindi lumingon sa kanyang pinagalingan ay hindi makarating sa par paruunan. So hindi natin nalingon ang 1899 Constitution. So paano tayo makarating sa magandang kinabukasan? So dapat lang na ibalik natin ito ang 1899 Constitution simula sa pagtuturo sa mga paaralan ng Constitution simula sa 1899 hanggang 1987. Salamat. Point well Mr. taken, Mr. Mr. Lorke. Speaker, si, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, si, yes. Jingle, si Jingle gusto ma-recognize. Okay, Jingle, you're recognized. Please. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. And ano lang po, uh, just wanna raise some suggestion that uh, what if uh, oh, it is possible that uh, in every Saturday uh, discussion like this, we also invite uh, any member of the uh, Philippine National or Armed Forces of the Philippines so that as we go along, then as we like uh, the ordinary people like me uh, will also Uh, informed or clearly educated about constitution so that when times will come that we need their support, uh, they can easily decide. They will already well informed what about about the constitution. Thank you. Yes, and uh, Mr. Speaker, yes. point of uh, information because uh, I think uh, I, I think uh, you as a descendant of. Uh, Dr. Antonio Feliciano, you are the grandson, the only living grandson right now. That comment of Congressman Villarama hits you at the heart. You better address that question. Yeah, it is a, a very uh, excellent, uh, really relevant uh, suggestion from Governor Villarama. And I've been... Uh, uh doing that in a way of getting in touch with uh, my niece and nephews who are the uh, siblings of my eldest uh, brother uh engineer armin posadas and also the siblings of uh, the, the late uh, colonel uh, rolando posadas of the Philippine Constabulary, uh, who was the commander, uh, camp commander in uh, Cagayan de Oro. But it's kind, and also uh, the um, grandsons of uh, Dr. Antonio Feliciano on the Feliciano side, they are now in, in Davao, uh, whose uh, father was my uncle, uh, namesake of uh, Antonio Feliciano, who was the first uh, city treasurer in Davao. And uh, recently, about uh, two months ago, I had the, uh, the commitment of, uh, of my nephew, and I will have to ask uh, uh, his permission to give me the liberty to divulge his name. But in the meantime, he says that anytime that we need 
about uh, one million strong of uh, of supporters, he can rally this one hundred million strong, uh, inclusive of all the uh, groups in Mindanao. And so I can renew that in a way. I'm also already giving him signals. And uh, I think the first thing that I will do is for him to join us in the Congress, representing a district in Mindanao. So that's a point well taken, Mr. Uh, Governor Villarama. And uh, thank you for that uh, excellent suggestion. Salamat po. Uh, you're welcome po. Maganda po kasi itong uh, ating Saturday Zoom eh. Uh, nakakagising ng mga utak. <laughs> Salamat kay, kay Professor Doctor. At, yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah. Villarama. Mr. Gorm Villarama. I'm 82 years old already. But, I'm but, the but, last, but, living, last living grandson of Dr. Antonio Feliciano. At that time, he was 32 years old as... Uh, Gil was saying that those uh, representatives, uh, either elected or appointed by General Aguinaldo, were all young people, and they were all uh, educated. In that, uh, my grandfather was the first medical graduate from UST. Okay. <laughs> and uh, as a footnote in history, he was the uh, uh, attending physician for the first uh, child. Uh, for the first uh, born of uh, you know Rivera. Wow. And you know Rivera, you, as you know, was the uh, first cousin of uh, Dr. Rizal. That, that's why they were not able to, to continue their relationship or to get married. Because uh, okay. you know Rivera was the first cousin of Dr. Rizal. But hindi uh, kasi, hindi kasi ni Congressman Villarama si Dr. Rizal. Eh. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, you know, Rivera got married to a uh, railroad engineer that stopped uh, construction in Dagupan. So, this German engineer, I just don't remember his uh, last name, got married uh, to uh, Lino Rivera, and whose uh, first uh, born was attended by my grandfather, Dr. Antonio Feliciano, in Dagupan. Yes, but uh, Dr. Antonio. Posadas, I think uh, what Congressman Villarama was suggesting was uh, not only to contact the Feliciano line, but the other things that uh, the other uh, families that were involved in the signing of the Malolos Constitution. And you told me before that there is a document which was produced by the Centennial Commission that was chaired by uh, uh, Vice President Laurel, which gave awards to the families that were involved in the signing of the 1899 Constitution. So oh, somebody okay. among uh, our group here who has access to that centennial document should research the families that were given awards to by this Laurel Centennial Commission. And from there, maybe Congressman Villarama, with his uh, contacts in government, would be able to try to trace these families where they are now. Correct. So... Yeah. Uh, Governor Rivlerama, I suggest that you look up uh, some uh, documents that were encapsulated in a time capsule at yeah. the time of the uh, 2000 centennial, okay. where uh, Vice President Laurel gave uh, certificates of recognition to all the descendants of all the Malolos Congress delegates. Yeah, uh, so since uh, you are in that, uh, you are in the Philippines, <laughs> and I'm here. And as a matter of fact, maybe in the uh, in the uh, museum of the Barasuan Church, you would uh, yeah. have all these uh, uh, people or relatives of the uh, Malolos Congress uh, delegates uh, whose descendants were awarded the certificate of recognition in 2000 by. Uh, then Vice President Laurel. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Speaker, yes. Okay, Mr. Speaker, I can send uh, a list of the delegates uh, who yes. signed the Constitution of the Malolos Congress uh, to all of you and to our group here, and yes. particularly to Congressman Villarama. Now, what, what I'm saying, Gil, is the uh, 
the list of uh, people who were awarded a certificate of recognition in 2001 by by uh, Vice President Laurel Den, those are the list now of the descendants who may be still be alive or not. But yeah, there, uh, yeah. there you are exactly where you find the list of names of the descendants of the uh, delegates. Yeah, I I'm able to get the list of. Uh from the internet, I can download it. There is a list there of uh, the signatories that includes Antonio Luna and uh, the other people who signed it. I think um, 85 of them or something like that. I will okay. send it to Congressman Villarama and to the rest of the group who are interested. Yeah, and then maybe I can ask the provincial board of Bulacan to make it a project. No? Correct. Yes, I, yes, uh, yes. It should go. be a project of the Barasawin Church. And since Congressman Villarama from Bulacan, this should be this should be his flagship project. Sige po, uh, I'll do that. I'll do that. Wow, thank you, Governor. Kasi magiging ano, maganda yung ating grupo pag kasama natin yung mga apu-apuhan ng mga unang delegado, no? <laughs> nah, we should not baby. just uh, yeah, we should not just limit it to the signatories. Yung sinasabi ni Ben Lorke kanina, cause up na yung apo ni General Macario Sakay. Sa yeah, mga Oh, it, 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 si, it, 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 si, mga, si, si Cesar Berata, uh, apo ni Aguinaldor, anak apanda, eh, isama rin natin yun. Sir, correct, yeah, yeah. anything has, uh, who, who have uh, a connection with the uh, with those ancestors. Baka, baka yeah. magkita yung apo ni Aguinaldor tsaka yung apo ni Antonio Luna, magkabahari <laughs> ng ulit. Yung pong, uh, yung pong pisang buo ng tatay ko, ang, uh, ang, ang nanay po ay eh, apo ni Aguinaldor. Pero oh. hindi hindi yung branch namin. Yung oh. napangatawa po ni Dr. Antonio Villarama, yeah. kapag didadolo ko, isa yung legaspi. Pamangin oh. ni Emilio Aguinaldo. In fact, uh, si Sir Birata, pag may namamatay na Villarama, na, na doon lagi eh. Dahil uh, kamag-anak ka sila. Uh, oh. I, I, I can, ano, I, I can uh, check from my uh, mga second cousins ko na po yung mga po. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that even uh, Cesar Berata, I know him personally. Actually, yeah, that's very good. Let's get him uh, involved. Okay, anything else? Uh, not, uh, I, if any more wants to uh, ask me questions about what I just mentioned. Yes. Any more uh, question or interpolation on uh, Dr. Ramos' uh, privilege and narrative? Recently, okay. Yes, yes. We have a person here who is silent. I think uh, his name is Rob. I think this must be Mr. Rob Seralbo, the friend also of Congressman Villarama. He's not oh, talking yeah. at all. Okay. Please, Mr. Bear Rob Seralbo, what do you want to say? And uh, historian din yan. Uh, hindi hindi umiimike. Ikwan lang siya. Nakikinig lang. Sige. Next, next Congress, maybe he can get ready with uh, a point of information speech. Yeah. I think uh, we should give the floor to a distinguished person here, Mr. Topax Palaiko. He is uh, in charge of the, of the Athenian alumnus. He is here. Maybe he would like to comment on what we're doing. Please be recognized. Mr. Palaiko, Topax Palaiko. He's a friend also of Congressman Villarama. Oh. But I think he must have left already. He's not uh, responding to our request. Okay. Again, may, meron kami a weekly, ano, may weekly webinar kami inviting uh, all the political leaders. Yes, yes. They have a oh. big group. They have a big group. They just yeah. invited uh, uh, Senator Dick Gordon to address them recently. And uh, their attendance went to the top. Uh, it's beyond uh, 100. It, it topped at 186 or 200, I think. And the limit of uh, Zoom was just 100, so they had to increase the limit. Uh, Mr. Stolaik yeah. was just unmuted. It was a very significant meeting that we just had. Congratulations with Dick Gordon. <coughs> Topa. Topa. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <coughs> Okay, go ahead, Mr. Mr. Kulaiko. No, I'm just listening. I'm just getting a to the subject <laughs> since it's new to me. Well, uh, thank you very much for gracing us with your presence, Mr. Kulaiko. 
and I really uh, uh, was enjoying your sessions that you had with uh, uh, Senator Dick Gordon. He's just still yeah. quite uh, a dynamic person, even at his age right now. Yeah, interesting. So we can uh, discuss what you have uh, discussed with uh, Senator Gordon then next uh, session. If we well, can Senator invite Gordon, you. Senator Gordon might offer you the vice presidency, Mr. Robert Posadas. He's running for president, I think. No, I'd like I'd like to debate with him first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, any anybody else would like to ask me questions about what I said about our constitution, its history? Uh, again, Mr. Ey has raised his hand. Okay, Mr. Okay, Mr. Ey. Okay. May anyway. I suggest one? Uh, kung pwede sana makasama niyo si masama niyo si Nigel po sa isang episode ng isa sa mga program ng GM Team sa Hilpara. May paliwanag itong problema natin sa 1980s sa 1890s ng Constitution at kung ano ang role natin dito para magkaalaman din talaga kung gaano ito ka-importante kasi kasi natindang ko na ho na parang importante na alam natin ito. And Mr. Bien Loike, may ask you a question po. Nakalay din ako pa ang ang anong bit of ang ang paro sa Supreme Court na possibly isang panyo ni Dr. Capley. Okay, you have the floor, Mr. Lorde. Pake ulit nga, pake ulit, hindi ko nakuha. Nakaready na ba yung ano nyo, yung tama din nyo, yung yung sa rate of ang paro? Ah, suggestion ko lang yun. Suggestion ko lang yun sa GM na kung maari, ah, gumawa sila ng uh, rate of amparo at saka isumiti sa Korte Suprema para malaman natin kung ano ang kasagutan. Siguro, uh, isuggest ko lang din kay Sir Hilton, no? Uh, yung nasabi ko na kanina na sa maanyo si Apoy or si Nanay Jet sa isang episode ng DC Marita Show sa KDP, Ano may panibulag naman yung 1890 Philippine Constitution po? Kung ano ito ka-importante? Yes, I'm willing to uh, uh, talk about it sa grupo ninyo. Just give me an invite and I will talk. Okay, okay. No, no, no. Okay. okay. Mr. Posada. So, any more question on Dr. Ramos' uh, point of information? So if there's nothing more that you would like to raise, then we will move to close the session. Second motion. Any second motion? That's Gianno Carco. Close it now. Yeah. Okay. So then well, we declare. And pasalamat mo pasalamat din tayo kay Melo Gold, si Melo Lugod, siya ang naging charge ng ating technical. Kaya naka-broadcast itong ating kontakt ng Facebook groups na siya ang admin. Maraming nakikinig sa atin ngayon. Yeah, Melo, Melo, I'd like to um, uh, tell you that you really have uh, done an excellent job and I connected with it in that uh, I agree that's what I've been, we've been looking for, for an alternative website wherein, uh, where, wherein a post on Facebook, if it's deleted, will remain independent and still accessible directly. Still accessible directly. So wow. that's a good... Uh, that's a good Excellent uh, work. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Independent Speaker, uh, Mr. Speaker Gian, Gian Bibiano has raised his hand. Can you recognize him? Okay. Close your raising hand. Good. 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 Please be recognized. Morning po. Uh, Hill po. Have yes, a question Mr. Po. Since, since, since di pa po tayo malaya pala. So, so since, since wait. Who are the, when when we when we obtain that the true freedom po, uh, yung tunay na kalayaan, the the date of the independence they'll be changed from June 12, 1898 to that date to the date we are going to take back our true freedom. And once the uh, once our constitution back to 1899. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's right. That was the gist of my comment that actually 
our uh, move towards true freedom for the people, wherein the wealth is not alienated from us, had been aborted by the intervention, the interdiction of our move to, for freedom by the Americans. The Americans, in effect, took over the uh, natural wealth that the Spaniards controlled, and they were the ones, again, who controlled it, and they carried it over into the Laurel Langley agreements. The reason why uh, this process was uh, sort of uh, muted in our Philippine political dialogue is that the Americans demonized this demand for the uh, uh, demand for the return of this alienation to us as just communist propaganda. Now we're talking about it as non-communist. We are not advocating communism. We are just advocating a process of correction, a correction that uh, has to be done in history. And we will not correct it by confiscation of property. We will not do that. We will correct it with the pure economic processes of uh, uh, declaring uh, the powers of eminent domain to return the natural wealth of the people to the people in the same way that the Norwegians own their oil. We should own our natural wealth. And we will not deprive this present owners the uh, value. They will be paid. They will not be expropriated. This was the gist of the Bolivarian constitution done by Hugo Chavez when he took over the uh, oil interest in Venezuela and gave it to the Venezuelan people. He did not expropriate them. He bought them. Of course, the Americans said they were bought at a very cheap price, but he still he did not just confiscate them. He bought them, and that is why it was so difficult for the Americans to bring him to court in any international court. But right now, of course, the Americans are getting uh, their revenge and keeping <coughs> the Maduro presidency, which was a the ear to this uh, Hugo Chavez thing. But Venezuela has their own problems. We, uh, I could not dare to be an expert on the Venezuelan thing. It is just the Bolivarian uh, constitution of uh, of. Uh, uh, Hugo Chavez, which he used to uh, begin the changes that he initiated in Venezuela. It was called the Bolivarian Constitution because Hugo Chavez changed the constitution of uh, Colombia into the Bolivarian principles that was in the original constitution of Gran Colombia when Simon Bolivar uh, defeated the Spaniards in the liberation of Gran Colombia. Gran Colombia was an aggregation of uh, South American countries which now broke up into several countries like Bolivia, Venezuela, Chile, all those things. Before it was just one Gran Colombia, including Argentina and Brazil. So these are histories that we have to know about because uh, just like in the technology field, there are best practices, best practices in technology. There are also best insights that you can gather from the histories of nations that went through similar experiences like us. So you young people should not be uh, stingy in your reading of history. Read from it, learn from it, and then be more of a Filipino because you learned from the others. Okay, so any more uh, question or point of uh, order or anything else? I think we should close this now by our prayer. Okay. Thank you for attending. Right. It was a very fruitful experience. Right. Thank you. In the absence of anything else, I declare the session closed until next Saturday then. Thank you. Recording stopped.